let's get sweaty. Hello and welcome to the Shemu Dodo Dodo. <laughs> Dodo. It's going to be one of these nights, I think, mate. Yeah, I think it is. Hello and welcome to the Shemu Dojo Show, season four, episode six. I am Skill Jim, of course, and I'm here with Mr. Stella Blade, uh, Matthew Oliver. I, I didn't really have one prepared for you, then, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, good man. How are you doing? Wow, heads a bit spinning at the moment because we've just launched issue three of Shemu World. Literally. Just over half an hour ago now. We decided to record this episode on the same day. (laughs) I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But but yeah, man. Just insane already. We've smashed the five grand mark. So uh, we will discuss the magazine a little bit later if this is all news to you. But yeah, Matt, how are you getting on? What you you've been up to recently? Just have a little chat again, just to sort of break us in gently. Yeah, I'm all right. I had some time off work sort of between this show and, and the last one we recorded so i bought stellar blade um mm. but on a bit of a whim i needed something to play over my time off i'm glad i did thoroughly enjoyed it i'm glad you did mate yeah the difficulty spike towards the end is a bit bit of a bit of a bastard <laughs> but i struggled with it the whole game to be honest i did it i persisted and and yeah i did it on yeah on the standard normal mode which i'm told is really quite hard <laughs> so i was quite proud yeah. of myself for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. i thought good little game yeah, and I, I hope they do a sequel for it. It was very much, I think someone described it like, I think it was you said it was like near on sort of a Bayonetta type title, and I'd probably agree with that. It feels smoother than Bayonetta, though. I think the combat feels smoother, and it's very satisfying when you smash out like a perfect parry or dodge and counter attack because you can get some really good moves in there with it. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, loved it, and bring on a sequel. Completely agree with you on Star Blade, mate. I, I, I would say it's, it's kind of like in between Bayonetta and. You know, one of these Souls-like sort of games. Maybe oh, like yeah, Sekiro, yeah, yeah. actually. I, I, I really liked Sekiro. And same sort of thing with the the blocking mechanic where you sort of like do perfect counters and perfect dodges and that sort of stuff. And that's why I really... I mean, I didn't at first. I didn't really like Sekiro like that first night that I played it, but I gave it another go and just absolutely fell in love with it. And it's the same sort of thing with Stellar Blade. Very difficult to begin with, but you yeah. sort of persevere a little bit, get past... You know, sort of understand the mechanics of what you're supposed to do with the blocking with your your weapon and and that sort of stuff and get these counters going off and stuff. And absolutely fantastic game, you're right. What have you been playing? I've I've been playing Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble, Ah. um, which I don't know if you picked that up yet, but quality game, actually. It's... I did a, a show with KC the other week, actually, yes. that was a um, real, real good discussion of the round table. Um, definitely check that out, guys, if uh, you're interested. That's on the, the Sega Lounge one. I think it was 125 episode or something like that. Episode 125. I would highly recommend the newest game. I wasn't very excited at first because like all the trailers and stuff have been showing a lot of the multiplayer. Oh, I don't yeah, even think yeah. there was a trailer about the single player. And obviously I'm not too into multiplayer games these days, so... I almost let it pass me by. It was only really because I knew I was going on that show that I was. I, I thought I picked up and sink my teeth into it. Um, but I'm actually very, very surprised by it. I think the multiplayer is probably the worst aspect of the game. Oh, really? And it's, it's still really good, actually. Yeah, the multiplayer is still really good, but the single player actually is where the game shines for me. And if anyone's ever played the original Super Monkey Ball games, or like 1, 2 on GameCube, or, or Deluxe on Xbox, original Xbox... That was probably like the the heyday of Monkey Ball. They kind of did like a lot of games in between that with gimmicky sort of things and yeah, sort of forgettable games in my opinion between those years. But yeah, this this kind of harkens back to the originals in terms of like the these like two hundred stages, Bloody just hell. great. Yeah, just simple sort of like platform. Well, you know what I mean with Monkey Ball, are you rolling yeah, like, yeah, a, 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 a track and just try and get to the goal? Very much grounded in that original super monkey ball experience so if you're a fan of the original games definitely check out banana rumble because it's very much like like the originals for me probably my 
probably the second favorite in the series for me actually it's really really good high praise that that's very high praise, high praise. um other than that Matt, i've been working away on shemmy world preparing that i was off myself last week actually but yeah i just spent a lot of time sorting my office out as well selling games <laughs> that sort of stuff getting rid of units obviously I, I don't know if listeners are aware but i'm planning to to actually move to japan later in the year fingers crossed comes off um but yeah so it's selling all my dreamcast collection saturn collection just odd bits and bobs that i uh I don't really have any regrets for selling them, but my my sort of plan was games like Dreamcast games, like especially PAL cases are like, you sneeze on them and they shatter. Sega Saturn games, you know, the discs starting to disc rot, like none of mine were disc rotting, but you know, we're sort of getting into that sort of the length of time where discs are starting to become an issue. So I felt like I had a good chance and life-changing aspect to be able to just sell them now and get decent money for them and then utilize that money to facilitate the move to japan and then start collecting again in japan so you know (laughs) i'm not like never collecting ever again but that was sort of my plan where it's like i couldn't go out now and all the saturn games that i enjoyed all the dreamcast games that i enjoyed i can try and find like the japanese version in japan so that's kind of what i've been doing recently looking around the room yeah i'm down to like three shelving units now still jam-packed of stuff in here honestly the amount of stuff i must have had you know it was all nicely neatly stacked away but as soon as you start ripping things down and selling stuff and getting rid of stuff just it's just chaos it just seems like it's never ending (laughs) but i suppose that is a a me problem something i've created (laughs) and then other than that i picked up a little amber nick rg35 xxsp device thing I uh, haven't really got stuck into that yet, but I've just been playing a couple of little Mega Drive games that I fancy playing, because obviously I've sold all my stuff, as I've just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't really got any Mega Drive games to play, so I was playing Dick Tracy and, you know, a few others on there, Moonwalker. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Some, some of my favourites, Rocket Knight Adventure. And, yeah, it plays Dreamcast games as well, so I've been playing Virtual Tennis and Cannon Spike on there. Some just fun games. Fun, fun games to play on a handle, actually, not too intensive requiring like thumbsticks and multiple button presses you can just use your d-pad with virtual tennis basically and have a good time anyway matt so i think we should roll into the episode now we've got a little bit of news to cover um, before we get into the final of the kickstarter updates series of episodes that we've been doing we definitely are going to finish today because we've only got 14 updates left and uh, hoping to also have a little bit of a chat about the Kickstarter as a whole after we've covered these last 14 updates, and we've also got a Terry quiz later in the show to look forward to. But first, Matt, let's get into the news. So speaking of Kickstarters, um, obviously mentioned it at the very start of the show in the introduction, we've just witnessed the launch of Shemu World Issue 3. Uh, Matt, how do you think it's going to go? Do you reckon we're going to smash through the goal or what? I well, when we started recording, it was just hit the five thousand pound mark. I've been cheeky. I know we said we wouldn't do this, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> but we're now at five thousand six hundred and eighty-two with one hundred and fifty-four backers, and we've been oh, going about an hour. So you that what? Insane, isn't it? Third of the way there already, which is mad, absolutely insane. Um, yeah, it's a testament to the project. I mean. Anybody who's picked these up will know how good this thing is. Um, and if you've not picked this up, uh, you need to be quick about it because they, they will go. And the particular tier that was called the trilogy has all gone. So you They've can't get gone. the original issues of issue one and two. They are all gone. So that trilogy set of issues one, two and three, all 15 are now kapunk. Gone. Goodbye. You're never getting them again. That is it. Goodbye. And you literally are never going to get them again because I'm never, ever planning to reprint them. And that was all the, the old stock. That's all gone now. So. Mm. That's <laughs> it's it. It's kind of a little bit of a weight off my shoulder in that sense. But honestly, I know you said it's testament to the, the magazine, but I mean, it's 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 testament to the Shemu community and all the people out there true, that are true. actually backing uh, this project that we've created. I mean, I just, I'm so humble about it that all the support from everyone through each of the issues. I mean, issue one, for me, I didn't know how people were going to take it because obviously it's a, a brand new thing. It's Kickstarter again, which, you know, was a bit tainted with some of the projects over the years and, 
you know, mm. Shenmue 3 got a little bit tainted, as we'll, we'll get into a little bit later with some of the, these later updates. I mean, perhaps we're sort of in the, the upturn of uh, positivity in <laughs> regarding the Shenmue 3 updates that we're in at the moment, but some of the ones previously have been a bit, you know, calamitous in a sense. <laughs> yeah, um, to so put it politely. To be able to sort of release a brand new Kickstarter project and for it to go successfully and I'm an honest guy and hopefully people appreciate what we've done with issue one and two and they're confident enough to, to back it again with issue three, uh, which is incredible and I just want to thank everyone, you know, from the bottom of my heart for always supporting the dojo, you know, and me and Matt and just what we do is incredible really. So a little bit about this issue. So this is issue three, of course. I'm planning to get this shipped to everyone probably the tail end of October, early November. The reason is um, I'm working with the, the Shenmue 4 2.5D guy who obviously originates in China and he's making the, the actual art cards. Great artwork. It's got like a gold trim, very akin to the Shenmue 3 rewards, you know, the Kenji Miyawaki drawings and, and those sort of white things with the, the gold trim around that they were using. Uh, it seems to be a common sort of thing in terms of, I don't know, I don't even want to call it paper stock because it's, it, it is like card and mm. that's kind of what you'll expect with this artwork from Shenmue 4 2.5D. I just love it. I love how it's got the sort of like shimmery foil effect to the front of it. Great artwork as well. Um, so that's why it's going to be slightly delayed in terms of that because my, my original plan was as soon as the Kickstarter's finished and I know the exact amount that we need to produce I was going to just get everything sent and sorted because I'm actually off for two weeks at the start of September. So I was thinking if I can get it to line up with those weeks, I can start packaging and have like a good full week at packaging. But obviously that won't be the case. But it kind of will in the sense because I'll be able to do like, say, half the packaging and then in October, marry up the items, if you know what I mean, and, and then yeah. start shipping. So that's why it's going to be towards the, the tail end of October. Early November, we've got some... I don't, I, and I don't really want this to turn into a Shenmue World uh, podcast, but I'll just quickly run through what is you'll you'll be able to find inside the magazine. So obviously we've got the incredible cover art from Yorimitsu. You'll you'll see it. You'll see the images, especially if you're watching the video. Matt will chuck some images of the, the front and the back cover here. We've got the continuation of the history of the dojo. This actually wraps up the chunk that Peter did, Matt. So I mean, next issue. I know you did actually continue to write the dojo history. <laughs> I need to finish that. <laughs> yeah, well, we can look into getting that sorted in the next issue. <laughs> um, God, yeah. For podcast uh, listeners and appreciators, there's a, a guide on seasons two and three. I just thought nice to sort of promote the dojo content in a dojo magazine. And then we've got a, a blog post from Hiki that sort of has been converted into print form, which I, I quite like the, the thought of doing that with certain things. We've got an interview with Lizzle Wilkson, and she's actually hand signing prints as well that's included with this particular issue obviously we did that with eric in issue one corey in issue two so it's nice to get liesel in issue three then we've got actually some some nice articles we've got one from adam dory we've got one from oliver jiao you may know these quite popular people on um, social media or whatever and obviously adam dory was the infamous uh, shemu three is made guy back in the day and also works for IGN, right? Yeah, he's very high up at their parent company these days, actually. Yeah, so really nice article from him about his time in one of the early E3 events. Definitely check that out. I think it might be 99, actually. Then we've got an article from Lewis Cox of the Dreamcast Junkyard. Really nice article he wrote. And then uh, Shem Musings has written uh, Shemu the Animation Episode Guide, which is really cool. I wanted to get some anime stuff inside this magazine, and I, I figured between issue two and three, we actually have had the anime mm. in you know its completion. That's happened in between these two issues, so why not get a nice episode guide in there? And then we've got a little article about the future of the Shemu the Animation from Jet, Splash Breeze. The final part of the Yu Suzuki's China trip, Phantom Riverstone, obviously. A uh, Chobi Chan guide I've written myself. A Shemu fan model overview, actually. This is a really cool one by Aki Museum. And then just loads of fan art, as you'd expect from various talented artists. Puzzle Dojo again. Try and keep things consistent. 
and yeah, that's about it for contents in, inside the magazine, but obviously included with the magazine, we always do extras. We've got the Shenwave Collection Volume 2 from Rio X. Phenomenal music. You know, I love Rio X's music and actually getting this, the second part to this collection is uh, pretty cool. Like I said, the aforementioned Liesl Wilkinson hand signed print. It's cool. You get a trifold folded extended cover poster included with this issue as well. A 40 page character side story comic book from Shen Sun. Really nice. Um, previous really issues good, two and one, while well, issue one and two, he did sort of like shorter stories. So they sort of fit inside the magazine, but this actually was so big we thought, well, why not make an actual comic to go with it? And then we've got five more art cards. These art prints from Luna again. Uh, obviously, last issue she did Bailey Village. This issue we're doing Niawim. We've got the Shemu 4 2.5D card that I just talked about. The issue 3 backer card. Your name's going to be inside the magazine. There's potential for more additional items. And then Matt, if you want to briefly tell us a little bit about this contribution. So you may have noticed instead of £18 like issue 2 was, and I know with inflation... It might be expected for the price of stuff to go up. Things have gone up, but because we're doing a CD rather than a Blu-ray, I have managed to maintain the level just about at £18. But we are also sort of forcing you to do a £2 contribution to something that we've got planned later in the year, Matt. We do. Um, and all being well, so just sort of touching wood as I say, say this... December the 4th, there is going to be something happening with the hashtag Let's Get Shemu 4 campaign. The £2 that's been put on to the Shemu World uh, back, uh, the Kickstarter campaign, for every £2 or every backer, that £2 goes towards this project. You'll get your name on the Dojo website as part of this as well. We are in the very sort of early planning stages of it. I do think people will find it funny. I hope they see the irony in what we're doing a little bit. Um, and I appreciate everybody who's who's contributing towards this because there is a reasonably significant cost involved in this. I'm not going to lie to people. It's, but I also want to be transparent as I can. But I don't want to spoil anything too much here. But December the fourth, we're in sort of negotiations around like artwork and things at the moment and timings and how it's all going to work and how long for. But yeah, watch this space. It's going to be a good one and hopefully it tops Times Square. We'll see. We'll see. But I hope people at least find it funny and find the irony in what we're doing here, because I think once once it happens and where it happens and and all the rest of it, I think I think people will join the dots and it'll be quite good. I'm going to go yeah. down hopefully on the day because I know obviously I know where it's going to be. I'll be taking some photos that morning as well, so there'll be there'll be updates on the social media on that day as well. I'm going to go down there. And, and do some bits and pieces with it in the day before we go on to stream that night as well yeah perfect man i'll, I'll try and join you on that one and uh, i do think it has got potential to go viral actually <laughs> hopefully so hopefully, hopefully so. so fingers crossed so let's move on from that now but yeah go check the link out in the show notes or i'm sure you're already aware of this by now because this is going to probably air two weeks after the launch but for any new listeners that weren't aware of Shimmer World Issue 3, it is available to back on Kickstarter right now, so get yourself over there and uh, yeah, grab one while you can. So Matt, speaking of hashtag Let's Get Shimmer 4 and some of the, the things that we're, we're doing right now, we actually trended again the month just gone, and yeah, again Matt, by the time we air, we're going to be a little bit dated on this, but we may and hopefully have, fingers crossed, trended again, so what would that be? Would that be the third or fourth time now? That if will we be have. the fourth, fourth <laughs> month in a row if we do. And I always get nervous yeah. around yeah, these because I I don't want to look like the, the fan base is disappearing if it, if it doesn't trend and people don't do it. And I will say it's a testament to the Shenmue community that obviously month one we trended, then month two we went bigger, month three, which was July, um, given the fact the UK was in the middle of a general election as well at that point in time, the fact we trended and were bigger... Um, shocked me and I'm you know thank you to everybody in the Shemu community who came out and pushed that because yeah. it, it it got us right up there against some really big news in you know in terms of not just nationally but internationally as well so to trend amongst that was was a massive achievement and we're coming into August 4th hopefully we've trended again by this point in time by the time you hear this I always get nervous because if it falls on deaf ears and doesn't work it then can look bad on the Shenmue brand community, whatever. 
but I'm confident, guys. I am confident that we can go bigger than last month. We go bigger than July and we keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. I must stress that we keep this up because the longer this goes on, the more noise we make. Somebody doesn't necessarily have to be Sega as much as I'd like it to be. And I have my own opinions on what I think they should do. Um, somebody will bite the bullet and come and sort yeah, at least sort a deal out that might be more towards what Yu Suzuki would want, or we find a middle ground. They've had interest, we just need to show the community is alive, well, we want more Shenmue, and we're going to buy more Shenmue. And if we do that, I promise you somebody, will, somewhere, will pull the trigger, and that game will get made. Yeah, but I do feel like more people are coming on board with this. Uh, let's get Shenmue 4. I do. And uh, using the, the video that Jibby created, and the text there, and it's kind of got that thunderclap old sort of style appeal. If anyone was uh, taking part in that back in the day, we're sort of doing that again now, and yeah. I, th- I think it's going. Co- I think it's going down well, and I, I, d- I do feel like more and more people definitely getting on board with it. I do, and I think as well the community's uniting again, which is massively important. And I know there was this sort of like Shenmue three, don't like Shenmue three. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole. But the community seemed a little bit fractured Mm -hmm. for a long time. But over the last, I'd say even year, I don't think it's necessarily just down to the trending and everything. But over the last year, I think there's been a change in ethos, a change of focus within the community as a whole. And it's showing. If we come across as united, we come across as wanting more, and we come across as a community that ain't going to back down, then I think we can prove to anybody that, Shenmue 4, 5 deserves to get made and we get this thing finished. Yeah, and it's good actually. The community are doing a really good job of keeping things ticking over, aren't they? You know, in between these yeah. these sort of silent periods we're in, you know, things like Shenmue World can hopefully sort of propel people, give them a bit of a Shenmue fix and um, keep that, that passion light because we're going to have to keep at this until we get what we want, basically. <laughs> As, an, yeah. as annoying as yeah. uh, that sounds, but uh, that's the sort of the predicament we're in. It's the truth. Uh, moving on a little bit now. So we have discussed previously, I don't know if we talked about it in the last episode's news or whatever, but obviously George Kitchen is currently creating a fantastic looking game entitled Shenmue Reclaiming the Path. We've had a little bit of a game delay announcement. I mean, it's kind of been too expected based on some of the footage he's showing, a lot of the work that's going in it. He's sort of one of those people that once he starts creating something, he gets ideas and starts building on them as well. Yeah. And, you know, sort of steam ball, uh, what is it, snowballing, sort of like Yu Suzuki yeah. did back in the day, I guess, where it's like he comes up with an idea and he wants to implement it. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so this doesn't come as a shock to me. No nor me in fairness and i think george is a, is a perfectionist as well which i think plays into it a little bit but obviously shenmue reclaiming the path was was going to release in september it's now been pushed back to sometime in march to allow the game to get the time and attention that it definitely definitely deserves i think we're all in agreement that dreams of saturn was excellent um so to be honest if it needs time in the oven it needs time in the oven but there is a bit of good news that comes from all of that. Uh, Dreams of Saturn 2.0 is coming out in December. We haven't got a solid date in December yet. I imagine it'll be towards sort of the end near Christmas. Uh, there's going to be a big update with the harbour, uh, some new mini games, a graphical update, and some other bits and pieces and fixes as well. We'll stream that once that goes live as well. So that should tick us over nicely for a few months into March when Reclaiming the Path hopefully hits hits the downloads and again once that's up and running i'll stream that too see that just sort of shows you actually when you think of like in terms of how the months are going to be you know looking going forward the community is doing such a good job of keeping shenmue alive and, and ticking yeah so without a doubt so we've got like the shenmue will kick started now and by the time it's produced or whatever that's like like i say october november then you've got george's dreams of saturn 2.0 sometime towards the start of December and then obviously that sort of is when we're planning to do this next big let's get Shenmue 4 campaign as well uh, on you know December the 4th so if George's Dreams of Saturn 2.0 releases after that then like you say you've got that sort of couple of months until reclaiming the path so you know it's going to see us well into April at least at the moment yeah. keeping the Shenmue sort of spirit alive so hopefully something can happen officially <laughs> by april you'd hope so I, 
it's hard because even if they signed a deal tomorrow, I don't think we'd necessarily find out until they announce something. But yeah. I just hope that yeah, I'm going to sound re- I, I'm going to sound really what's the word I'm looking for entitled. I'm going to sound really entitled here. The community is doing its bit and it's doing its bit phenomenally. It's brilliant and there's no gaming community like it for for me. But we sure as hell, it sounds really entitled, but we deserve a Shenmue 4. Just for the amount of work and effort and all the projects, all the fan art, all the posting, all the retweets, all the other community groups like Shenmue Forever, Phantom Riverstone, all those groups as well, pushing together. It sounds entitled, but the amount of work we put in, I, th- I feel like we do deserve it. Yeah. Um, but obviously you don't always get what you deserve in life, and I will balance that out, <laughs> but... You see what I'm saying is the community's doing a stellar job, absolute stellar job of keeping Shenmue alive. Um, and I just hope, and I do think it will be rewarded in time. I really, really do. I, I do believe that deep down. Yeah. Probably another Yakuza game. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, <laughs> don't get me started. Although there is the, like a dragon TV show and that's coming out. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not too sold on that at you know. the moment, if I'm honest not in terms of the way it looks i was quite looking forward to it and you know obviously we 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 joke a little bit about like a dragon series and the accuser series and them having about 16 games at this point and shemu's still trying to get the fourth but <laughs> um yeah that sounded really bitchy sorry but i didn't mean it like that. But the no i know you the didn't. tv I know show you didn't. i mean we did get an, an anime so we kind of had our, our tv show it's now their turn to get their tv show yeah, I don't know. Hopefully it'll be good. I hope it is. I genuinely hope it is. It is quite funny that Shenmue, again, gets its TV show first. So <laughs> does it before Yakuza, <laughs> like true. a dragon. Although um, they, they have had uh, live action I'm, movies and stuff like that in Japan, I think. <laughs> I'm being a little facetious about yeah. it, let's be honest. I hope it, like, all joking aside, I hope it does really, really well because I love the series and I don't want to put anything at risk for it for a series that I like. I just I just feel like the Shemmy community works so hard and pushes so hard that it it would be just reward to get the Shemmy story finished. And like I said, I, I believe it can happen. I believe it will happen, it, but we're, we're not there yet by any stretch. No, but Matt, if you wanted to sort of go outside and show other people what Shamu is all about, you could do so in a nice Ryo Hazuki jacket. You can. are actually now in stock and available over at Insert Clean Clothing. You've got the brand new yeah. Ryo Hazuki brown. It's not leather, but it's really, really nice. I'm sure you'll you'll t- tell us a little bit more about this jacket in a moment, but it's it's got a, a real proper stitching, stitch patches on there, a nice big Hazuki Tiger on the back and um, other items are um, sort of a reprint of is it 2019's white shirt I feel like 18 2018 I think. okay 18 um, which again is very reminiscent of the the jacket in terms of you know patches on this t-shirt but it is a white shirt not brown and also a Shemu pin that's been out for a while now we've spoken about that but Matt tell us a little bit more about the jacket Oh, the jacket is a bomber jacket made by Insert Coin. Retails for eighty four ninety nine in the UK. Obviously, regional currency may vary. Um, it is a really good item. I did an unboxing of it, so you can check the video out for that and what I thought like about all the items. But the jacket really stood out. I think it's probably their best one. The patches are brilliant. The quality of the jacket is brilliant. It's really warm. That jacket as well keeps you nice and snug, nice and warm. Feels nice and padded. Um, I like the color of it as well. Yeah, I think they've done a really, really good job with it. The T-shirt's fine. They said it was a reprint of the 2018 one. You said there were some little differences with it as yeah. well in terms of some of the printing on the arms different and the, the label's different. Um, and I completely missed out on my unboxing, quite frankly, yeah, well, but never mind. Well, basically, because I, I compared it to the other one, basically the colours on mine were a lot brighter. So the reds were like really bright on the, oh, on yeah. the new shirt compared to the old one there's also the new Shenmue logo inside so if you sort of roll up the inside of the shirt a little bit and look for the label um sort of the, the waist sort of area um the old one used to be the the old type font for Shenmue like mm. joined up right in and the the new logo they've got in there is like the Shenmue 1 and 2 font and also the oh, yeah, actual okay. insert coin label in the neck of the shirt is a different design that's basically it really i mean if that's not really <laughs> a, a, a massive 
amount of differences for you to, to, to go out your way to buy it again. But if you are a, a Shenmue collector, those sort of sort of subtle differences, um, you sort of class it as a variant. They if you know what difference. I mean, yeah, definitely. It's like an updated version of it. Uh, but I totally agree on the jacket, Matt. You, you've spot on. It's it's definitely a winter coat. It's um, when when they said yeah. the word bomber before, and obviously we had that previous bomber jacket that was like really thin. Actually, I I, I was looking at it the other day when uh, I unboxed my jacket and comparing it to the, the previous bomber jacket. The, the previous bomber jacket's almost like a windbreaker type of um, really thin, mm. um, almost a bit, not plasticky, but uh, not fabricy feeling either. It's like, it's a, a weird material. I don't know, probably is fabric of course, but it's it's that thin, it's, it is a strange, um, well, it's not strange, it is a bomber jacket, but the, the, compared to the new one, it's strange because the new one is like, a proper coat i mean they, they probably could have said the word coat in yeah. a sense it's definitely something you can see yourself wearing in the cold months and uh, yeah keeping quite nice and cozy in there and uh, definitely if you're in dubuita and it's snowing why not eh yeah really really <laughs> nice definitely worth doing did was there a discount i can't think there at the time when it launched there was insert mm. coin have every now and again they get like 10 percent off codes knocking around on the internet it's always worth checking if you're going to go and order yourself one they've got any of those 10 percent off codes kicking about because it's you know why not save a tiny bit of money on it as well because it is yeah i'm not gonna lie it's an expensive item but i think the money is well invested in the quality of the jacket actually yeah. it feels worth that money if that makes sense yeah i i totally agree with that when i was feeling it i was like this you know this is a, a high-end jacket actually um, well, yeah. not high end, but you know what I mean. Like for for insert queen standards, it is a very nice quality jacket, and definitely support Shamu merchandise like we said in the past because more likely to get more in the future. Right, Matt, let's have a little musical break now before we get into these remaining Kickstarter updates. Your first pick. Oh, here we go. So my first my first pick is hide and seek. So it's the, the music that plays when Rio plays hide and seek with the children in Bailey Village. Welcome back. That was Matt's pick there. First pick on, uh, from Shenmue 3, Hide and Seek. Lovely little piece. Right, Matt, let's dive into these updates now and let's try and nail this. Here we go. So, yeah, it's come around now, guys. This is the final chapter in the series of Kickstarter updates. Um, do you want me to start, Matt, with the first one? Yeah, go for it. Okie dokie. So, update 121 entitled Launch Trailer Now Showing. It says, Hello everyone, the Shemu 3 launch trailer is now up. We are mere days away from re release. The wait is almost over. Now more than ever, thank you for your support. So let me double check the date on this. So this was November the 13th, 2019. So we are literally within a week of release. Mm, we are. So Matt, 
we're going to watch this trailer oh, like yeah. we have done on the previous videos. And just because this is the launch trailer in particular, I just want to get your sort of take on the trailer as a whole in terms of it being obviously the launch trailer. A lot of people that perhaps aren't Shenmue followers are going to watch this because this is like, this game's out now, oh, I need to watch the trailer for it. Hopefully yeah. we don't watch one of the older trailers, but hopefully this is the trailer wow. that they, they do actually see. And so just sort of go in with the mindset of this could be the trailer that someone saw for the first time that sold them on Shemu and just see if it does do a good job of yeah. um, basically right. selling a Shemu 3. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Mild language, by the way. Did you see that? Yeah. Is there any bad language in the game? I, uh, I don't think, think so. So we're in the, the cave here, opening scene from the game. A moment of motion, a story renewed. The Phoenix Mirror. How did you get this? My father left it for me. It's what brought me to this village. Tell me about where you were born. You want to know about Yokosuka? Yes. I want to see what Japan is like. Bio, it's morning. You, <laughs> you got the wrong guy. Lies. Please let me know. I rather not get you involved. Still, you did good, man. I don't want to hear it. Honestly, I don't think your kung fu is strong enough. The Shinbo tree's blossoms are beautiful. The tree is gorgeous. Indeed. Yeah, it is. They're in full bloom, though, so the petals will start dropping soon. That's a shame. I just want to know why these mirrors were worth killing my father over. But people are looking for it anyway. Can Tell you seen the emboss fight. Yeah? <laughs> Here we go. Quite a big spoiler, that actually. It is, isn't it? This. In the context of it. I mean, there is parts of that trailer that I thought perhaps would be underwhelming for like um, yeah. someone, someone watching it for the first time, not knowing what Shamu is. It's a little bit confusing, actually, in terms of like what is actually going on here. Obviously, it looks like it's a story-driven game, which essentially it, it is, um, but actually not so much in Shamu 3. Or it is still a story-based game, of course, because it's uh, following Ryo's journey. But obviously, the the actual detail of the story we've we've spoken about isn't as detailed as the first two games. But trailer-wise, it's still a nice trailer. Actually, it um, doesn't really show any gameplay. It's all cutscene-based. But there's a few sort of pivotal moments in there. Obviously, with your your landy moment, your big fight, the sort of the the camera. What is it? Cin cinematography in some of the scenes there. Yeah. A little bit hit and miss, actually. Some of them looked amazing. Like, I always like that shot when you reach the top of the stairs just before you fight Mr. Gee. And oh, yeah, it yeah. zooms on on Rio's head. And the colors of the sky is like very blue sky Sega. And the actual graphics in that moment look stunning. And then it sort of pans out and you see Mr. Gee. And obviously, <laughs> it's a bit of a <laughs> contrast of character models. So there is like hit and miss elements in there. But um, I don't know, Matt, how, how do you think that that trailer did? I think, I, I think in terms of what when you compare it to what launch trailers are for action RPG games these days, and that's what Shenmue really is, I guess. I know it has its own niche and quirks, but most people class it or classify it as, a, as an action RPG type game. 
and it doesn't have a huge amount of action in that trade. And now, not to say what's in there isn't good, because you look at the um, the fight on the boat with Grandmaster Bay, that that's that that is really well choreographed and put together and looks really smooth. Actually, in fairness, a lot of the cutscenes with the fighting in look quite good. They look, considering they did a lot of the motion capture at WiseNet and then outsourced a load of it and probably had to do it as cheaply as possible. It looks really, really good on that sense. But they don't show a huge amount of gameplay, as you say. They don't show amount, a big amount of the fighting within the game itself. People may go, well, that's because it's not very good. I would disagree. I think it just needs more time in the oven, but that's another issue altogether. I don't think it did enough to capture new people in it very much tailored to Shenmue fans like I've seen that cave for the first time and the whole spiel around it 18 years time stood still that sort of thing for us that's yeah. really emotive for us that's vindication for us that's we finally got here but and I and I mean this with the greatest respect in the world to the Shenmue community who outside the Shenmue, Shenmue community will give a shit really about that I get why they did it, and I understand why they did it for, for our point of view. But if you're going to do that, you then need to have the rest of the trailers right and pull people in. And I don't think it does quite enough around that side of things for me, based on the action RPG trailers that you, you see these days, where things going off left, right, and center. It's showing off the battle engine. It shows off a load of things. And actually, like you said, James, there's a lot of spoilers in there. Obviously, we didn't know that at the time, but there's a lot of story spoilers in there in terms of you see Niao's son, you see the, the castle on fire, Landy rising up to fight Rio. That's pretty, you know, some of the most pivotal moments in the game are all in that trailer. They didn't save anything for the for the game, I guess. And mm. obviously, again, I don't want to sound like an arsehole, but it's going to sound harsh here that there wasn't really was there there were some really nice moments in the game that aren't in this trailer like when you meet uh grandmaster fang with the shenmue tree or the, the second shenmue tree and you see rio reminiscing about his father there that's really cool but there wasn't enough of that in between to sort of space into those moments that are showed in the trailer um so mm. yeah to sort of summarize i think for us it's a lovely trailer brilliant trailer for a new person coming in i don't think it gives you enough personally yeah it's a good point actually that you mentioned there do, do you think that the trailer because obviously shimmy fans were going to be lapping up all this it's very difficult to sort of go in blind in a sense i'm, I'm sure some fans manage to you know i know like people like michael huber try and stay blind on yeah yeah, and, yeah you know upcoming shows and video games and stuff like that but seeing the development and and Again, that could be a flaw of the Kickstarter that we've sort of seen the project true, grow true, true. And, and and bloom. A lot of the stuff there, like you say, didn't really wasn't potentially as impactful as it could have been because we'd already seen a lot of the big moments. So it, we we, we kind of knew going in that Rio was eventually going to see Landy in a room and you know have this fight. We we're going to see the introduction of Niao Sun for the first time ever since like the the Project Berkeley days. Uh, that early concept art. We know Ren's back. Some of these things would have been a mystery had we have not seen these things in the trailers playing mm. the games, and they could have had more weight and impact when you know that that first Ren scene. It's like, oh, it's Ren. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, exactly. Tra- you know, whereas it kind of falls a little bit flat because you know he's going to be there. So the introduction scene of Ren isn't as epic as maybe you'd thought it would be in your head. <laughs> but maybe mm. if we hadn't known that Ren was going to be in the game. And you're like in the the tail end of the game at that point. You're in the, the second half in the Abu. Maybe that would have been a I don't know, like a, a mind blowing moment or a, you know a jaw dropping moment. And then Niao Son, that would have been definitely a jaw dropping moment, especially yeah. with the the fact that she was a different woman <laughs> for for a large portion in the Abu. She was you know this Feng Li character uh, pretending to be a nice person. Maybe the actual you know obviously you would have probably had an inkling that this woman isn't all she's making out to be because you always have that sort of like eyes, evil eyes sort of thing yeah, going on. Yeah, exactly. Something a bit strange, but perhaps you wouldn't have thought Niaosun had you not already known that Niaosun was going to be in the game. And then that could have been a jaw-dropping moment that, oh my God, that is Niaosun. You know, maybe we, we have been bamboozled <laughs> yeah. by this uh, Lee thing. So yeah, I, there's some good points in there, Matt. Like you say, it's it was sort of tailored to a Shenmue fan with the, the messages at the start of the trailer and also the trailer ending with, you know, there's Bailey Village. It's like 
that's what we've been waiting for all this time. And the trailer, they, they know to put that at the end of the trailer. You know, that yeah, is, yeah, yeah. here's Byley Village. It's like, oh my God, that is a 15 year, 18 year journey or whatever. But yeah, it, it does a job. I know we, we said, I don't know if it was last episode or one of the previous episodes where an actual real trailer describing what Shenmue means to the community. It's been 18 years. I know it does say like this story has been renewed again or whatever, but it, it didn't really hearken too much in those words that used at the start of the trailer to sort of say to new people that this is a cult classic. This is like been brought back from the dead by the fans. You know, this, this was a game that Sega would never have touched and didn't touch basically until you know, Yu Suzuki managed to get a kickstart off the ground and it raised 7 million. You know, it was the most thingy kickstarter and Guinness World Records and stuff like that. If that stuff was in a trailer to sort of hype people up like, oh my God, you know, there must be something about this game that's special. Whereas the trailer that they use there, if people didn't know that going in and they're just sort of browsing for, for new game releases and, oh, Shenmue 3, let's have a look at this. Perhaps it didn't really capture that in the words mm. that they used at the start of this trailer. Um, I yeah. don't know if that's kind of what you meant, but yeah, I think it's a bit of both. In fairness, I think from from a fan perspective, you, I think you're right. I don't think they harnessed enough of that, you know, to, to the wider gaming community of actually why this thing's so damn important to us and why we went so hard to get the third game made, and now the fourth and hopefully fifth games made. So I think you, you've got a real point there. If, if they had their time back, and I had a voice i don't have one if i had a voice i'd be saying to them pretty much what you said lean into some of that history lean into the community why this thing means so much and also because you can do separate trailers as a build-up to the release mm-hmm. trailer for example so you could have that release trailer it's a big epic trailer that shows off the game the gameplay some little story elements and leaves enough in there for us to go so what comes next but build it up with the whole this is why yeah the community you've got this this is why Shenmue is important this is Shenmue now I know they did that in Japan a little bit with Yu Suzuki because Ezra did some some work with IGN Japan on that and I think that was Ezra sort of pushing that quite hard and it's a yeah. little bit of a failing of Deep Silver that a they didn't translate that to English why I don't mm-hmm. know and b why did they not try something like that themselves come on just to give the listeners a, an idea of what you're talking about it's that video where he's sort of sitting in a black room in yeah, a chair, yeah yeah and he's sort of split it into like five different parts where he's talking about literally what we've kind of said like the fans and what it means and then some bits about the story and the gameplay and stuff like that it's, it is a cool series of videos but unfortunately like you say it wasn't translated and it's a real shame because I don't want to take a massive dump on on Deep Silver. There's other issues around Shenmue 3 as well, which we'll cover at the end of the Kickstarter updates, I'm sure. But it just felt like they got to the end and were glad to see the back of it. They weren't really invested in it. They thought it was going to be a quick moneymaker. And it probably was with the epic deal. that They got all the money from that and and the sales and everything else. And they just sort of... I am going to say it. Fuck it. They hung it out to dry a little bit, in my opinion. And we're then sort of picking up the pieces. Take the game quality away and what people think about the game for a minute. I think towards the end of that, Deep Silver just went meh and got it out the door. And that was the end of it, unfortunately. And had they thought about it and been more invested in it, I think they could have really built up to a proper good release. Bearing in mind as well, reviews were were embargo to the release day. I Now, I don't really see an issue with that. But apparently that's a big issue in terms of video games. That gets people on the back foot. People go, oh, the game must be crap. You just don't manage that PR very well at all. And it, it all builds to this, this negative reception that could have been managed a little bit better. You're not going to manage the reception on the game when people play it. You can't control that. You really can't. But you can at least build up properly and give it the time and the air to breathe. And I just don't think they did. No, I think the other issue you've got is Shamu. Obviously, it's a niche series, but it takes a type of person, I think, to understand and to know all of the deep elements that make up the series. And yeah, true. a company like Deep Silver perhaps didn't know how to market it. You've got that sort of strange sort of thing that Sailor, uh, Sega struggled with back in the day, like how do you market Shenmue, and especially in a different country? You know, it's maybe 
it makes more sense in Japanese setting at the time. But how do you market that to the West back in 1999? You know, they struggled to to sort of do that. That's why you've got some of these weird trailers like the American one where it's like some bloke in bed dreaming about Nozomi <laughs> or, yeah, you know, for oh, Shemu yeah. 2. I suppose those were bad trailers in a sense, weren't they? And you think about it, they were like promotional videos. They weren't like showing off the gameplay or nothing. I suppose that was a another negative for the Dreamcast back then. It's not necessarily... I'm just going off your video you've done recently, Matt, about misconceptions, but it wasn't necessarily Shenmue's fault that Sega's marketing team didn't know how to market the games and a lot of the, the early teaser trailers and on TV and stuff like that didn't even show any gameplay for stuff. There was like just human beings walking around or... You know what I mean? There was like a weird Dreamcast trailer with an eyeball, I remember, that was like flying through the screen oh, or something. Yeah, I remember that. Do you know what I mean? They, they weren't exactly showcasing what the console could do and the games, which I don't know if that was good marketing or bad marketing. I, I, I could not tell you if that created success for the Dreamcast or, you know, dampened its chances even more. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I guess what again not to sound overly critical critical what the dreamcast game had was one you got into it and i know one is a bit is more akin to shenmue 3 in the way in terms of the pacing of it mm-hmm. but you had a lot of moments in shenmue 1 that resonate in shenmue 3 i don't think you quite have as many of them and i think that probably leans into some of the the challenge around it a little bit maybe Whereas obviously Shenmue 2, and I, there was only a few adverts for Shenmue 2 because obviously the Dreamcast was buggered by that point. But the adverts actually leaned into a little bit more of the action gameplay stuff. Um, but when you actually pick up the game and play it, there's a huge amount of things to do. The story is amazing. And it just it's, they, they'd learned their lesson a little bit from Shenmue 1, but by which point with the Dreamcast gone, it was almost too late. And again, mm-hmm. with with the <clears throat> marketing around Shenmue 3 and what, what happened, I... If you don't understand a game as a, as a company, that's fair enough, right? Because they weren't involved in the original conception of it. They weren't around when, when Sega were publishing this themselves. There's a community here who are willing to help, who would have done it for free. If you want to understand what the game is, speak to us. I'd sign any NDA, any NDA, to bring across what Shenmue meant and how you communicate that message of what Shenmue is to a wider fan base, to a wider community. And they didn't really do that. I don't know why. That's up to them. But with a Shenmue 4, I don't think you can get away with that. You need the community probably more than ever now, actually, to, to really sell this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've gone down a rabbit hole here. Yeah, of course, mate. We always do, don't we? But let, yeah. let's move into the next update. I'm sure we can come back to, to this sort of a chat towards the end anyway. So we then come on to update 122. So this is reward delivery schedule. So it says, hello, everybody, uh, or everyone rather. Reward delivery information is in, so please read on for details. Uh, this was, I should have said the date, was November 15th, 2019. So sure. game fulfillment. So you're about four days outside of release here at this point. Yeah. Um, so it says PS4, uh, physical and digital and Epic Games Store digital games are scheduled for delivery on November the 19th. However, there might be some delay in certain areas and they just give a little disclaimer to say it might, might occur depending on the following reasons. Post office mail volume during the pre-holiday <laughs> season. Fair enough. PS4 cross-region selections. Oh, man, and this was just before COVID as well, right? <laughs> it, yeah, oh, yeah. well, yeah, well, COVID hit in the March 2020. It was just before yeah. I got married, this was. So I suppose maybe this just managed to sneak through before then, right? That's yeah, these it, it definitely did. It definitely did. So PS4 back a selected region other than where they live or areas where they, they're experiencing uncertain or difficult delivery conditions. So then it comes on to PC physical packages and discs it says due to production circumstances pc physical packages and discs will not be delivered by november 19th epic store games product code including the pc for physical backers will be delivered through your survey from fan gamer so pc physical backers will able to be able to play at release we apologize for the delay on post update once physical packages and discs are ready to ship that was always very weird um mm. don't don't really get that one so i'm trying to think now matt was there still a code inside the box at least for the pc copy or was it just Uh, i think it was just a launcher but i didn't have it i didn't have it at backer stage so i don't know somebody who backed the pc version and got a physical copy might be able to tell us different but i i I mean i don't don't know either way i mean i did but i I still couldn't tell you because i can't remember but it just just with it reading as though like even if you backed a physical you'll get a code that you can play day one. 
so it sounded like a positive, but maybe that was the only way of getting the code anyway. There might not have been a code included with the box. I can't think I off the top of my head. Think, I think you're probably right. I think they were always going to send the code through. It was going to be a launcher on a disc, which pissed yeah. a lot of people off. And I can get why, and we've talked about that. But anyway, mm-hmm. PS4 Physical Asia re- region, also due to production circumstances, the Asian region of uh, PS4 physical copies not developed delivered by november 19th we do not have an exact delivery date of the asian region ps4 physical copies so we are providing digital download codes for applicable backers through the survey on the day of release physical discs will be shipped as soon as production is complete there you go then so they are giving out code still so you could technically have sold it and there you go yeah um we are sorry for the inconvenience but hope you will enjoy the digital version during the wait and announce will be made once the physical discs are ready to ship just to have a quick mention about the asian region then so obviously We've always always sort of said that it was never really released in China. Oasis yes. Games logo is on one of the boxes. I think it might be on the Hong Kong release. Interesting. So whether I'd, I'd have to do a bit more digging that you know that we just sort of marketing in, in in China at these gaming events and stuff like that, like G Fusions, whatever it's called, and and these mm. little Chinese events and, and marketing the game in China. I, I don't know if. It was flat out said that it was originally always going to be released in China and physically, or there was going to be an Asian region. Maybe the I Asian don't. region one is the copy that I've got. And, you know, we could be wrong saying that it was never released in China. I don't know. I it's a think bit of a hard one to sort of figure out. My, I haven't obviously played the Asian region version, so I don't know this categorically. But my understanding is that version is essentially the same as the Western version as a Japanese version. So right. that will have all the content, Bailey Village, the references to China and other bits and pieces, whereas the Chinese version was specifically censored for China itself. Hong Kong is slightly different because they run the, the sort of the, the two party, the two, um, I can't remember the exact name of how it runs, but it's essentially Hong Kong runs, runs itself mm-hmm. outside of the Chinese government, although that's probably a little bit <laughs> under discussion at the moment from a political standpoint, but I won't go down there. Um, so... Essentially, that version would have been the Western version or very close to it, but the Chinese version was heavily censored. And that version, I don't think, ever released in China. I think it just never got through the, the censorships over there. And Even digitally. Released. Even digitally. If anybody okay. managed to play a version of it in China, an actual legitimate version is listening to this, um, let yeah. us know. So we'd be very interested to see what it was, what the final product was. Yeah. But I don't know. So then we come on to physical rewards. It says, as previously announced, physical reward production and shipping preparations are underway. However, some rewards will be shipped after the game release date. So it's very clear here they want to get the game out first. And, and I get that. Yeah. And that's fine. I didn't have a problem with that. Although my my shop bought copy turned up before the Kickstarter copy. It turned up on the Saturday, I think, or something like It turned up really early, actually. I was playing it like days and days before it came out, but I wasn't wasn't complaining. Uh, so the following rewards are scheduled for shipping uh, arrival on or uh, soon after November 19th. It says, please note the game will be shipped separately from other other physical rewards. So the illustration, the signed version, the Yuzuki signed version of the illustration, the laser engraved crystal. I want one. I don't know. Uh, There's yeah, like I three of them two. ever. <laughs> Come on, get me one. Yeah. yeah anybody got one? I'll, I'll buy it. Um, Temple of the Blooming Flower calligraphy. The Vintage Grab Bag for Project Berkeley, Vintage Grab Bag for Dragons Don't Sleep, Vintage Grab Bag for Keep Those You Love, and Rio's Jacket, the original. Mm. Rewards to ship post-release. This is where it gets a little bit ironic. Um, These rewards will ship after the game release. All are in different stages of shipping, prep, and production, and we will have shipping updates for each one ready. So the physical CD soundtrack, physical art book, the Shenmue 3 official T-shirt, or T-shirts rather, Capsule Toys, Rio's Jacket, The Replica, which I don't think seen the light of day even now. I won't go down there. We'll talk about that later. Rio's Watch, the Shenmue script set, uh, the collectible figure, Rio collectible figure, and the concept character, Bust. Insane, in it, that they're shipping all these separately to everyone that backed. So, I mean, I, I know, you know, going alone just from Shenmue World, just bundling everything into one package and sending it to like Australia is like 30 quid. So how much money are they spunking by sending each of these products at different times uh, out of that original budget? They must have spent so much on shipping. 
I dread to think, and I don't know whether it's poor project management or just the fact that they've tried to get it all together and they've been bound by the companies that have been making them. They said, no, you can't do this and things are separate because obviously not all, not one company is going to make all of this stuff. They're going to have yeah. to get this source from different companies, different timelines, different fulfillment. So there's probably an element of that as well as how the project was managed. And I don't want to take a giant dump on it. But I just, uh, they could have saved some money somewhere, perhaps, like you say. I, but I don't, what I don't know, what I just stress is, I don't know the intricate details of the discussions that happen behind the scenes. I'm making an assumption based on what I think. I don't know this. Yeah, but the jacket that hasn't shipped even to this day, that frankly is ridiculous. That is, that deserves every inch of criticism it gets because that's mad. But anyway... Digital rewards, all digital rewards, including game codes, are scheduled for delivery on November the 19th. Uh, they will be claimed through the download and downloads code section survey uh, provided by Fangamer. Fangamer will resend your survey access email for the release, which they did. Uh, official website name credit. We're in process of updating the official Shenmue 3 website with the backer names on the recent survey responses. The backer credit page is scheduled to go up after the release date and announcement will be posted here in the updates when the site is ready. It says, depending on refund and posting timing, some of the names of refunded backers might be listed. That We knew that would potentially happen anyway. In-game rewards. All in-game rewards are scheduled for delivery on November the 19th. The in-game reward code will also be claimed through downloads and downloads code section of your survey provided, provided by Fangamer. In-game reward activation. Two codes are necessary to activate your in-game rewards. The first is the platform side game code, either for your PS4 voucher code or your Epic Game Store product code. The second code is your backer code, which will be entered into the game. Codes are linked and both must be activated in order to unlock your in-game reward or reward pack. Please follow the updates in the days ahead for more Shinby 3 info. And thank you, as always, for your continued support. Mm. A little bit of confusion with that backer code, actually. And mm. like, I, I wouldn't know mine off the top of my head. I'd probably have to log back into Fangame and and double check that again and it's only really linked to one version of the game into i think which was the yeah, ps4 that's right. version i think yes, you can still uh, yeah. access that on the ps5 yes you can but yeah they're very confusing actually with all, all the different codes being attached to different things and i know there was quite a few people that were like missing elements of the fan gamer or couldn't find out where this particular code was or <laughs> it, yeah. a bit, bit of a messy way of doing it but it did work. It just took a, a little bit of getting your head around, I think. Eventually. Yeah. Right, let's move into update 123, which is still before the release of Shenmue 3. This is November the 17th now. Um, so we're two days off. This is entitled Game Code and In-Game Rewards Activation Walkthrough. So I think, based on what I've just said there, that it was a little bit confusing. Maybe they came out with this this bit of a guide to help you. Mm, looks like it. <laughs> so it says, Hello everyone, this update explains how to redeem your game code and activate in-game rewards. So about game codes and backer codes, below is screenshot walkthrough to redeem your game code and unlock in-game rewards with your backer code for applicable backers. To activate Shimmer 3 in-game rewards, there are two main actions you will need to take. So first, you need to redeem the game code issued for your chosen platform. So a voucher code for PS4 or product code for Epic Game Store. Then enter your backer code in the game itself. All backers will need to go to either the PlayStation Store or the Epic Game Launcher to redeem your platform-specific game code. Backers with in-game rewards will then need to enter their backer code in-game after starting up Shenmue 3. So it looks like you go to the PlayStation Store, click Redeem Codes, put your digital code in. So that's where you get your copy of Shenmue 3 for, say, the PS4. Yeah. And then within the game, you go into Options, Backer Code, and then type your backer code there. And then from memory, it pops up and says, like, oh, these are the rewards that you've been yeah, exactly. selected or, or yeah. whatever. Uh, Epic Games Store version looks very similar. Looking at the screenshots, you log in, redeem, so you get your game. And then once you're in the game, again, you go into the backer code section. And that's basically it. By the looks of this, it's just got the general yeah. information again at the bottom. Yeah, straightforward, so I guess. Pretty straightforward. So then we come on to update 124, and this is a thank you message from Yuzuzuki. This is November the 18th, 2019. So the updates are coming thick and fast at this point in time. Interesting that they sort of skipped. Oh, sorry, November the 18th. Yes, November the 18th. Sorry, I'll let you go. I thought you said That's March. all right. <laughs> March. Ooh, we've gone back. Um, the, uh, it says hello everybody November 19th is finally upon us so today our happy game creating uncle Yuzuzuki would like to give a special thank you message 
All right, shall we give it a quick watch? Let's give it a quick watch. Chibi Yu Suzuki. I like that one. I love that. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, go. Thanks from Yu Suzuki. Jolly music as well. Greetings, everyone. Soon we can put Shemu 3 in your hands. Thank you so much for your enduring support these 18 years since Shemu 2. A game like Shemu is something one person cannot make on their own. Every day I shared laughter and tears with the Shemu 3 team, and I feel that the game came together because of all of you too. I hope from the bottom of my heart that Shemu 3 becomes special for you. Truly, I thank you. I love that music. Yeah, me too. There's, there's like some just little bits of the game they're showing off here as well, yeah, which just little bits of the trailer that we've already seen. Oh, we've got yeah. one last thing, please. If you have fun playing Shemu 3, introduce Shemu to someone new. It would help me, it would make me happy if even one person somewhere in the world finds out what makes Shemu Shemu. Here is to the journey ahead. <laughs> I quite like how they did that very old um, Warner Brothers. Yeah. Warner Brothers circle thing going on there. Yeah, that, that's all, folks. Yeah. I, like I wonder that. if that, yeah, that's all, folks. That's what I was thinking. I wonder if that little model's in the game code somewhere or not. Possibly. I'm sure <laughs> someone can find it if it, if it is. Um, and then it says, for us, it's been an incredibly short four years. For everyone uh, waiting for the day, it's been an incredibly long four years, but here we are. We honestly cannot thank you enough for all the support you have given through thick and thin. We hope you'll be there with us um, as the journey goes on. From uh, all of us, the Shenmue 3 project team. And then you've got your general information below again. Fantastic. Nice little update there from Yusuzuki. Right, let's move into update 125 now. So this is shipping codes and code activation issues update. So this is November the 21st, so two days after release. It says, hello everyone, we'd like to address some of the issues being brought up concerning shipping and game codes. If you're experiencing problems, please see below for more information. Issues will vary for everyone, so if your problem is not addressed here, please contact us and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So PS4 physical game has not arrived. PS4 physical games have gone out to all backers who have confirmed their shipping address. The following may be reasons your game has not arrived. So your shipping information is not confirmed. Please access your survey to confirm your shipping address. Physical rewards will not be shipped until you confirm your shipping address, which is self-explanatory really. Survey mm -hmm. response is not confirmed. Please make sure your survey answers have been saved. In order for surveys to be completed, you must use the button on the bottom right of the questions page to save your responses. I know a lot of people forgot to do that, didn't they? It was like, yeah, it was how do you issue, expect anything to happen if you haven't uh, responded? I know, I know. Shipping problems occurred in transit. Please contact the shipper listed in the shipping notification mail from Fangamer or contact Fangamer directly. A damaged game or slipcase. Items may become damaged during shipping. Please contact Fangamer if any other items were damaged. It was unusual actually how they did ship the PS4 physicals because they used like different stores around the world, right? Didn't we have like a local yeah. game store kind of do the UK distribution for some reason? Yeah, the, it was different because Fangamer did it in America. They had that nice little Fangamer yeah. box with Shenmue 3 print on it. Here, here yeah. I think we've got a Jiffy bag. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was like they have just been sent to, I don't know, some random in the UK to help facilitate it. But I think it was a game shop or something. It was a, mm. it was like some game was. or something. I can't think. Where is my game code? Codes are claimed for the downloads and download code section of your backer survey provided by Fangamer. Please visit your survey to get your code. If you need to have your survey resent, please use the link below and follow the instructions. I bet that link still works today, you know, so you can get your survey again. It probably does. In-game rewards do not activate. The following may be the reasons in-game rewards are not able to activate. So the backer password plus DLC code is for in-game rewards only. They do not come with game-only tiers. What does that mean? So I think there was just a physical copy or digital copy tier only. So it was sixty dollars and twenty nine dollars right, right. for the digital copy. So that was just the game itself. Okay, codes not entered correctly. Please follow the steps and update one, two, three to activate the codes. Late survey response. Backup passwords may not have been validated for the first time. Survey responses accepted after January the sixth, twenty nineteen. 
Backer passwords for these affected backers are planned to be patched at a later date. I wonder if some of these people that forgot to hand over the surveys and stuff are the reason why, you know, in the Save Shemi building, some of them are like generous backer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I know they Because obviously they, they can't a... change the game, can they? It's too late. No, it's, too, it's way too late. They had a... Um... They did have a day one patch as well, but and I, mm. I think there was a few patches after this as well, which I think must have. I think one of the patches those. actually fixed the notebooks, didn't it? One of the notebooks in one of the hotels, because I remember, I think it was Adam Coral that brought up that his name appeared on two pages next to each other. It was like it, they'd accidentally copied and pasted the same page twice. Ah, oh, I don't remember. And then that, I'm pretty know. sure it was in the day one patch. Actually, it, it had fixed that um, ah. hotel book. That'd pretty sure game playthrough wouldn't it uh, mm. a completely vanilla 1.0 version of Shenmue 3 and see what the differences are anyway it was per- apparently it was perfectly playable oh yeah for sure man i don't think there's any bugs at all not no really. crashes not, not, nothing great nothing game breaking anyway that i saw no credit names or messages not listed the following may be reasons credit names or messages are not are either not listed or incorrect so surveys not responded in time so that's just literally just what i said there mm. Uh, obviously, the survey ended in January the 6th, 2019. So if you hadn't given them them by then, it was too late, of course. Name, message, response, review, credit names, and messages, text were reviewed by the project team and may have been altered based on trademark infringement, abuse, etc. I bet they did get a few I bet people did. that have been pissed off during the thing and had heard mm-hmm. all the, the media scurrying about saying scam and this sort of stuff and... They just thought, well, my money's gone, so I'll uh, I'll leave them a little bit a nasty message, yeah. yeah. Death threats in the back of messages or something. Oh, God, uh, yeah. God, I don't even want to... Uh, <laughs> no, I don't want to go down that hole. Yeah, see see, see what some of the messages they, they actually received were, because I, obviously if they say abuse, they must have got something. Yeah, yeah. And the final one of this update says non-game physical rewards. Shipping preparations are now underway. Once rewards are ready to ship, you will receive a notice from Fangamer and we ask for your patience in the meantime. That's basically it. Yeah, it It just says follow the updates for more info. Yeah. So then we come on to update 126, which is DLC code reissue and physical rewards update. So this was December the 6th, 2019. So reasonably quickly, actually, after the release of the game. Actually, mm-hmm. I'll give them give them credit of how quickly that was. So it says here, Hello, everyone. This update will address issues concerning in-game rewards for the Epic Games version and the steps for code reissue. We also have a quick update concerning reward shipping. So DLC code reissue. Now, I do vaguely remember this at the time, but I never experienced it. So if anybody did, again, please do let us know what this really did. It says, as some of you are currently experiencing, in-game rewards may not be functioning properly. We sincerely apologize for the trouble this has caused. With everyone's help, we were able to determine that some Epic Games Store DLC codes were either not working or did not unlock in-game rewards from tiers, including the Pledge 4 tier. This issue will soon be resolved and non-functioning codes will be replaced with new ones. So it says here, Epic Games DLC codes will be reissued for Shenmue 3, um, DLC ID 02 through ID uh, 14. I don't know what that means, okay. but okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reissued DLC codes will be available in the downloads and download codes section of your survey. Fangame will send out emails to affected backers when the codes are ready. It says backup, backup passwords unaffected and will remain the same. The code reissue does not apply to PS4 DLC codes. Shenmue 3 DLC ID 01 codes um, function properly, so, so will not be reissued. And it says code activation, both the reissued epic games dlc code and the backer password must be input again to unlock the in-game rewards please follow the steps in update one two three to activate the codes please make sure codes are entered correctly for backers who responded to their survey after january 6 2019 backer passwords may not be validated for the first time survey responses accepted after january 6 2019 DLC codes will be reissued to applicable backers who responded after this date. However, in-game reward DLC will not be able to be activated until the next patch, which is currently planned for mid-January. If you're experiencing problems with your in-game rewards, please message us through the Kickstarter messenger or email us at info at 
and it just says please replace the at with the yeah. at symbol. So there wasn't another patch then, was there? In, in general, there there must have been. I don't remember mm-hmm. it, but I guess with DLC coming out, they would have patched it anyway. It was a natural point to possibly do that. Yeah. Um, physical rewards in update 122, we announced that the following rewards would be shipping with the game. These rewards are still undergoing preparation for shipping. That's the illustration, the signed illustration, the laser engraved crystal, crystal memories. Temple of the Blooming Flower Calligraphy, Vintage Grab Bags from Project Berkeley, Dragon Don't Sleep and Keep Those You Love. We apologise for the delay when the items are ready to ship. The back of the tiers will receive a shipping notification from Fangamer. Thank you for your support. Mm. So I wonder if it was Fangamer that actually had all that stock. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe we should email them. Oi, you got any spare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I thought it was like the WiseNet offices I, sort of because yeah, some I, of those items especially the vintage grab bag stuff were like from yu suzuki's personal collection i thought mm-hmm. so unless yu suzuki sort of drove around to someone's house and dropped them off and <laughs> <laughs> went into the the fan game warehouse i don't know i don't know i'd love to know where they where all this spare stuff's ended up because i think they could either sell it off or just just you know he's preserving anyway but that's another discussion in itself yeah right update one two seven physical rewards fulfillment timeline so hello everyone uh when was this so this was january the 9th 2020 yes Yes, that makes sense okay hello everyone this update will cover fulfillment timeline estimates for the pc physical and other physical rewards a few little strange gaps in the the sentence there I don't yeah. know if you can see that, Matt, can you? Yeah, like... yeah, I can. It sounds like someone got a bit happy with the space bar. <laughs> uh, rewards already shipped. Laser engraved crystal. Vintage grab bags. Rio's watch. Rio collectible figure. Temple of the Blooming Flower calligraphy. These rewards have already been delivered or are currently in the mail. Delivery times may vary depending on local shipping conditions. So you've got physical reward for the timeline. So the rewards will be shipping as production finishes for each reward. So rewards will be shipped individually in most cases. This will be interesting to see uh, what they've got planned for the jacket. (laughs) So mid to late January 2020, you've got the illustration. Yu Suzuki signed illustration. The concept character bust, January 2020. Yeah, I think they were pretty much spot on with the character busts on that timeline from memory early february 2020 they've got the physical cd soundtrack and the shimmer 3 official t-shirt march 2020 or later so they've given them a bit of a timeline (laughs) Uh, a never-ending timeline with the word later physical art book capsule toys and rio's jacket replica so the above dates are based on current estimates and may change updates will follow when shipping dates are confirmed and then we've got a little bit at the bottom here on the PC physical package and disc. So physical PC package and disc production has been delayed. Fulfillment is now expected for early February 2020. We know backers are eagerly awaiting the other physical rewards that are included in the reward tiers and apologize for any worry or inconvenience caused by the delays. It will take some more time for all rewards sent out. So we would like to ask for your patience until we can get them to you. And then for the first time ever, for some reason, the rest of the email is in, or the rest of the update is in Japanese. How strange. Very, Mm. very weird indeed. Okay, then. So that brings us to update 128, version 1.04, patch notes and DLC news. So this is about right in terms of the timeline from the previous update when they said it was planned for mid-January. So this is dated January 21st, 2020. So yeah, about mid-January in fairness to them. Uh, Hello, everyone. The latest patch has been released today, Tuesday, January 21st. Times may vary. Version 1.04 patch notes. So this, some of this was based off of um, requests that were made. Like in the initial build, you couldn't skip initial conversations uh, with the ones. The so general updates, players can now skip initial conversations. Backer mm-hmm. content fixes, event control fixes, fixed issues which stops game progress when multiple events happen simultaneously at certain timings. Fixed background collisions, which makes players get stuck, and mm. fix certain localization texts. Not the Shenmue, not the blooming. Oh, we found, that's where we found the scroll thing. Yeah, I wish they'd have done that one at least. That's like the <laughs> the only one that matters really. <laughs> yeah. It's like the big pivotal story moment, and it doesn't make sense. So there we go. Uh, battle adjusted balances for certain skills. Mini games adjusted the fishing spot of the green catfish in Bailu. Fixed a bug where the camera cannot be controlled in the Lucky Hit minigame. Adjusted the wage amount per cargo in the forklift minigame. Fixed purchase prices of items which were incorrect. 
aka uh, they patched out the book yeah. trick. That's what and I was then thinking. It's, yeah. <laughs> And that book trick was really handy for getting money pretty quick. And it says other other minor bug fixes. And then it says here, late survey responses added. Backup passwords are now active for survey responses made between January the 6th and November the 29th, 2019 with the version 1.04 patch. Backup passwords will now unlock in-game rewards if you responded to your survey during this period. To activate in-game rewards, re-input your backup password found in the downloads and download code section of your survey for directions. Please see the game code and in-game rewards activation walkthrough update. And here we are, Battle Rally DLC now out. I love this DLC. I will say that immediately. Yeah, best um, one in it. The best one by a mile. Uh, the first of the Shenmue 3 DLC Battle Rally is out today. Ryo Hazuki, Ren Wu Ying, and Wei Zhen engage in battle while racing their way through each course. Reach the finish line for the first place to acquire some awesome items. In another event, you'll search for Bailu's official mascot, Bailu Chan. <laughs> Find as many Bailu Chans as possible to get your leg up on your opponents during the race and acquire some fantastic items. I love the, the Bailu hunt. It's brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah. To play the DLC, you must have reached Niao. We will have save data on which the game has been cleared. That's interesting. I don't know why. Probably just because it... I, I don't know. I, don't, I can't even think of a reason for that. Maybe um, they just thought it's you've unlocked all the Bailu by then, so none of it's maybe, maybe spoilers. I don't know, yeah, no. possibly. It says Battle Rally is available for purchase separately through the PlayStation Store or Epic Game Store. Get ready to rally, and you could buy the season pass, which had which had all of them. Um, anyways, I think what a lot of people did because I think it just worked out slightly cheaper. And it says thank you as always for your support, and then you got the general information stuff at the bottom of the update. Spot on, Matt. I kind of wish they'd have done a bit of a Niawu battle rally. Like yeah, I do. Route. Parts of Fender Avenue and stuff like that would have been pretty cool and quite easy for them to sort of mm. produce, I guess. Um, maybe a bit more money they could have done there. I don't know. That oh, rally too mood. I'd have done it. I'd have bought it. I'd have bought it, mate. Definitely. But yeah, let's have a little music break now, and then we'll wrap up the remaining updates when we get back. This is Super Trade and Deal. Welcome back. That was Super Trade and Deal from Shenmue 3, of course. Uh, Niawu track, that one. Right. It's me, is it? Is it me? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So moving into update 129 now, we've got the, the shipping progress, mini update, and second DLC announcement. So February the 18th. So what was the other one? It was like January the 20th, was it? 21st, oh, I think. 21st, something like that. So yeah. almost a month on. They're releasing the second DLC pack as well, by the looks of it. Which is strange to me. At the, I felt like everything released at the same time, but it, they, they must have staggered them, which... Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense, definitely makes sense. It's just my memory is very hazy on that. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Fulfillment for some physical rewards have been delayed since the timeline announcement on January the 9th. In our next update, we'll have a revised timeline for the PC physical package and disc, physical CD soundtrack, and official Shamu 3 t-shirt. 
Mm-hmm. So the illustrations are now shipping. So the illustration for the collector's editions and the signed illustrations for the signed collector's editions are now shipping. Please look for the shipping notice from Fangamer in the coming days. And then this is what I've just mentioned here. We've got the second DLC pack. It is the Story Quest pack. So the second round of DLC Story Quest pack is out on February the 18th. Content includes an optional quest not in the main game and special items once the quest is cleared. So description, it says, One day, Ryo encounters Zhang Shuquin, subordinate of Zhiyuanda, who had helped Ryo out in the past. Just as Ryo thinks that he's renewed an old friendship, he learns that Zhang has been kidnapped, but by whom and why? So it says, To play the DLC, you must have reached Niawu or have saved data on which the game has been cleared. And you definitely do need to have reached Niawu on this one for sure, because it's actually sort of ripped out the game into it. You have to... <laughs> yeah it's, it's sort of like again this 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 actual content is staggered throughout the gameplay um progression of niawu every time yeah. you sort of get to the next story moment it adds another part to um the sort of the zang side quest thing mm-hmm. that's going on here. more intrigue more chawan sign get it playstation <laughs> store or epic game store thank you as always so yeah very much chawan sign heavy finally making the different patterns <laughs> yeah uh, like you said, though, this was very much a, uh, like a quite easy wall they put in the game to DLC this. I, I get the impression this was going to be part of the main game anyway, and then they just made it DLC for whatever reason. But it, yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely works better on another playthrough. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with, does. with that there, being able to sort of do the main missions, do some of the mini games, go around Niawu, do a little bit of the Zang quest, you know, it just makes or, or sort of fleshes out Niawu actually. Makes it yeah. feel more complete. It does, absolutely. And then you've got the boat DLC as well that's in the hour a little bit later. Yeah, which, which is actually a very good point to come on to update 130, which is a physical rewards progress update and third DLC announcement. This is dated the March 17th, 2020. So end of the month. Yeah, they're cracking them out here in fairness. We have an updated timeline for reward fulfillment as delivery time for some items have changed since update 127. Physical, uh, PC physical package and disc, there's a photo here of it as well, have been shipped. It says the physical PC cases and discs have now shipped. If you have not received a shipping notice or confirmation through the shipment section of the survey, please contact us at info at shenmu.link. Other physical rewards. Shipping will be ongoing as production finishes for each reward. So items will be shipped individually in most cases. Updates will follow when shipping is confirmed. Times listed below are still tentative and may change. So it says from April onward. Now, I can't remember whether this was kept to or not. So, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing here. I can't. Yeah. So Shenmue 3 official T-shirt as a photo of that. Slackerbacker version will be a blue design on a white shirt, which is corresponds to what they showed us previously. May, yeah. physical CD soundtrack and Rio's jacket replica. Ooh, in May. That's interesting, May. isn't it? 2020 we are now in the end of july 2024 I'll which considering there. i don't know where did they get that sort of prediction from because considering I from what we know. heard from like chow who has had to sort of give him like give, give them tailor-made dimensions and measurements and stuff like that to, to sort of make this custom jacket then strange that these were touting it for may don't know what happened i there. i i don't know it as i said it's a bit of a mess and if do you think originally it was going to be like not a unique jacket if you know what i mean and just like a let's make 200 of these jackets from a company maybe and then it changed or maybe that fell through and then they decided to do these sort of tailor-made ones I i don't know it's possible it's possible either way it's not been communicated particularly well and while i'll defend a lot of Shenmue 3 and the Kickstarter and things, you can't defend that. This is years and years. You know, this is bonkers. Yeah. June, the physical art book. July, the capsule toys. There's a photo of them. I really like them. They're brilliant. And you can see them in their little capsules as well. We are requiring all backers who are receiving physical rewards to confirm their shipping information through the survey before rewards are shipped. If you have not already confirmed your shipping information, please do so through the survey. We apologise for the infrequent reward fulfilment updates and for any trouble or worries caused. In addition, the coronavirus situation has caused significant manufacturing Mm, delays, for which we must also apologise. We ask for your patience until all items are delivered. So there is some mitigation. I will give them that. I forgot, and that's my fault. I forgot about COVID. But again, I'm 
we're still years and years on with with the, the jacket. And they're, they're shipping each of these separately, which is I again know. just insane to me. But whatever. There you are. <laughs> Big Merry Cruise DLC release, arguably the worst of the DLC itself, but the final DLC for Shenmue 3. Uh, the third DLC installment, Big Merry Cruise, comes out today, March the 17th. Description, a huge cruise ship has arrived in the Chobu Harbour, bringing with it an all-new gambling area. Enjoy various types of entertainment aboard the ship. You can also acquire special items by clearing mini quests aboard the ship. Is it to play the DLC? You must have reached now. We will have save data on which the game has been cleared. Got some screenshots there. And it says, Big Merry Crew is available for purchase separately through the PlayStation Store or Epic Game Store. Get merry. Thank you, as always, for your support. Get merry. <laughs> Get merry. Okay. Where's the vodka? Yeah. It is probably the two silliest side quests as well. You'll find in yeah. there. A little bit of uh, more fun, I suppose. The, I, I, I do quite like the little quests. The second one more than the first, actually. The first is a bit big wheel chance, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. And whatnot, but... This, the second one uh, is is quite f- humorous, quite funny. <laughs> worth doing that one. It, yeah, it is. I don't know if you get away with it now. Yeah, true, but it is worth it. Uh, update 131, moving swiftly on a little bit now. So this is June the 8th, so March, April, May, June. Okay, we're three months on from the previous update. So this is Physical Rewards Progress Update. Hello everyone, we hope that this update finds everyone safe and healthy and that everyone is spending some quality Shenmue 3 time while practicing social distancing at home. God, this takes you back a bit, doesn't it, Matt, this? Oh, it does, doesn't it, yeah. It's God. mad, actually, that that was four years ago to me. That seems I insane. I know, it does, doesn't, doesn't feel like it at all, does it? No, and I know we're still sort of, people are still getting COVID and whatnot, but, I mean, reading this email just sort of takes you back to how it was like this deadly virus and everyone's working from home and you couldn't see your family members unless you're on zoom and zoom t- went massive and you know what i mean yeah. it's stuff that you don't really want to relive but uh, we're sort of doing it in text-based form here <laughs> um, the ongoing covid19 situation has continued to impact reward manufacturing and we are experiencing further delays from the previously posted shipping schedule a long string of delays has pushed for fulfillment times to some rewards far beyond original expectations and for that we would like to apologize to you we are working closely with our fulfillment partners to see that production moves forward safely and want to assure everyone that your pledged for rewards will be on the way so in progress physical rewards so again this sort of just updating the timeline shipping will be ongoing as production finishes for each reward so items will be shipped individually in most cases Updates will follow when shipping is confirmed. Times listed below are still tentative and may change. So starting from June, which is this month, right? Mm, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shenmue 3 official t-shirts. Emails are going out now to notify backers of shipping. If you need to confirm or change your shipping address, please do so by clicking the backer survey button in the body of the notification email from Fangamer Mailroom. T-shirts being printed and shipped starting with the Kickstarter version unisex large, extra large and medium sizes. Other sizes and the slackerbacker versions will go out on a rolling basis. So starting from July, you've got physical CD soundtrack, Rio's jacket replica. So that's moved from May to July now. <laughs> physical art book and starting from August, capsule toys. Finally, address confirmation email. The emails will be going as we begin preparations to ship the t-shirts. If you have previously confirmed your address, you don't need to respond. So it's only if you haven't, you obviously they need your you yeah. know, address. If you haven't received a shipping notice, you can contact them at that email. And that goes for some of the other rewards as well. Uh, they mentioned the illustration and physical game, etc. So then we dive straight into update 132, which is updated for mil- fulfillment timeline and international shipping announcement dated September the 2nd, 2020. So a good sort of, again, three months on. It says, hello, everyone. We begin this update with our apologies for again having to give notice that reward fulfillment is delayed due to the impact of COVID-19. Most of the items are now produced and shipping will start shortly. We ask that for your patience and a little longer and hope rewards will sh- the rewards will be worth the wait. So it says international shipping announcement. Before getting to the revised dates, we have an announcement concerning international non-US shipping. Due to a recent increase in the ship- international shipping fees, some international rewards may be shipping together in fewer packages. Well, that makes a lot of sense when they do that originally. Um, this could mean that some rewards will ship within the US before going out internationally because of the reward shipment cons- uh, consolidation. 
So in progress physical rewards, it says the Slacker Backer T-shirt, Capsule Toys, Art Book, CD Soundtrack, which were previously estimated for July and August delivery, are now expected to ship beginning in September, running into October. Shipping times may yet slightly deviate, but production for the rewards is now in the final stages. We thank everyone again for your understanding cooperation, especially now. I think that's the first look we got of that art book, actually, as well. Possibly, but, yeah. It's a really nice art book. I will say that. It's a really well put together art book and worth the wait. Like a nice coffee table esque book. Yeah, very, very we, nice. We haven't actually looked at the comments on these updates, but I don't know if you can remember, Matt, but were people pissed off that the dates kept changing or were oh, they probably. understandable because of probably. COVID? We'll have a look at this lot, shall we? Just, just okay. for banter. Yeah. So it says replica jacket. Replica jackets are currently on hold as it was recently necessary to switch suppliers. Back of mm-hmm. this reward will be contacted by Fangame in the coming weeks with further details. Because of this adjustment, there is time to change your size. Haven't received your rewards. Um, it goes through the shipment stuff, as, as we said yeah. before. Coming down to the comments, got people saying they got surprise packages with their stuff, which is great. Uh, so far, I've only got the T-shirt and lithograph, but nothing else. Bought the $500 tier. Back to $250, waiting for the toy capsule, still waiting. Wait, a lot of people sort of wait. Actually, it's not as... Not as drastic, drastic as I it? was expecting. No, I reckon no. it's because of actually them shipping things separately. So things were tri- trickling on all the time. They were getting an item. They were getting an item. So it was sort of oh, keeping there's, them. There's one happy person list. moaning about a refund, but I guess at this point mm. in time, they did say it was going to take a long time. And B, did you fill in your details correctly? Which is just going to put that out there right now. But anyway, Sorry. so that's the end of of that update. They are slightly getting shorter now, so we're we're down to yeah. the last two updates, Matt. So we are update one three three Steam release announcement. So God, so what's going Thank on? Here? So that was so that last update was September. Actually, I was thinking it was longer yeah. than that, actually that the they they'd left it. So this is October November. So a couple of months later. Yeah, it says hello everyone. Yes, it is official. Shemu three will be released on Steam this November the nineteenth. <laughs> I know it's I'm like so, a, kind, kind of a year so on. Glad. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Obviously, they had that that year long exclusivity, which they kind of spoiled. They kind of revealed that at the time. I think they had to that it was going to be like a year long exclu- exclusivity deal. And we, if you remember, one of the updates, they said they weren't necessarily convinced it would come to Steam. So the fact yeah, this happened, yeah. I mean, it had been an absolute PR meltdown had it not. So I'm glad it did. Yeah, this is kind of like a, a ha-ha moment, I guess. That I mean, it's kind of not. I think people still find the negatives in this, but... I'm sure. Yeah, but it's there. You can get it on Steam. You can buy it today. For about three quid as yeah. well, actually, at the moment. It's pretty, um, it's pretty cheap, yeah. It's, yeah. Game and in-game reward codes will be available for the PC version. Backers who manually selected the Steam opt-in through the survey during the September-October 2019 survey resend period. Applicable backers will be able to claim their codes through the downloads and download codes section of the survey. Fan Gamer will send out email notices when the codes are ready a few days prior to release. Um, I missed that then, Matt. So is there an option to wait until the Steam release. So what they ended up doing is giving everybody Epic codes anyway and then giving people Steam codes. So you Same the in-game rewards. Uh, I think, I could be wrong, but I think they just applied it to both versions. Right, okay. So you so could the people that do them. said, yes, they'd like a Steam code, got two lots like of everything. A, yeah, 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 basically. Is how including I the, the in-game stuff. That makes sense. I'm going to... I'm going to look at the. Um, someone's <clears throat> kicking off about they, why can't I change my version to Steam in the Fan Gamer Pledge Manager? Well, I do wonder whether you, again, at this point, mm-hmm. the amount of instructions they give, and it's really difficult to say. And it's, so picking PS4 over e, e, Epic Games will somehow negate Steam when Steam was already removed as an option. If you choose People a PS, they did say this. Thing, yeah, I know. And this person has moaned quite a lot. But. Um, if you chose PS4 over the Epic Games Store, of course you're going to get Steam. They made that very clear in, yeah. in the updates that happened previously. So I don't really know how you can moan about that. I'm not going to go too far down this. I think yeah, it's just a, I wouldn't a mess that's... at this point in time. Yeah. Just people being un, unreasonable. Unreasonable. A bit. And... 
you, everyone's got two games, so <laughs> it does say anyway. as well. With, with the Steam release, we hope more, even more people will journey to Guilin and the world of Shamu Three again, all for the first time. And I can't remember was it still priced full whack at this um, when it was re- released on Steam or not? I can't remember. I think it was cheaper. Mm. I think it was cheaper. Okay, okay. So update 134, Steam activation walkthrough and version update notice. Hello, everyone. Steam codes are almost ready and will be available soon through your survey. Fangame will be sending emails with a survey link to applicable backers. Downloads will be available at release on November the 19th, uh, 6 p.m. Cent- uh, Central um, uh, it's European, November 20th, 2 a.m. Japan, and November 19th, Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Mm-hmm. Game and backer code activation walkthrough follows. It says about game codes and backer codes. To activate the Shemmy 3 in game rewards, there are two main sections you need to take. Redeem the Steam DLC code, enter your backer code in the game itself. PC backers who have selected Steam option will need to get a Steam client to redeem the game. Backers with the in game rewards will then need to enter the, their Steam code through the Steam client by entering the in game back a code after starting up Shenmue 3 and there's a very quick walkthrough of how to do that here it's a little bit longer than the other one again just going to your back a code and it's a version update notice version 1.06 fixes a back a credit name display bug is scheduled for update along with the steam release for all pc versions and um, that's epic game store gog but it released on gog on the same time as steam as well there'll be a short delay before the ps4 version update is released thank you as always for your continued support interesting that that patch just fix a back a credit name display bug because don't they have to pay like something stupid like ten thousand dollars or something it's a lot of money patch, to, to get patches on like playstation and stuff mm. so anyway but i suppose it needed doing and yeah that's the last update matt that's so that it. was november the 18th 2020 and uh, i don't know if there's anything to it being literally to the day a year since release like someone was only tasked with managing the kickstarter for like a year from release i don't know <laughs> um but there hasn't been an update since. No, and I don't think we'll get one ever again, <laughs> quite no, frankly. No, probably not. But I mean, like you're saying, there's still some ongoingness in terms of the replica jacket. And they kind of didn't really fulfill telling people that everything had been shipped, right? There were still things a couple of mm. updates ago that were scheduled to go in this month and this month. We never really got like a, a conclusion of what happened to said stuff. I think it just arrived at people's houses eventually. Yeah, it did. It just turned up. Yeah, but I'm not quite sure why the updates just suddenly stopped with this one. Again, maybe there was like some sort of a year clause in someone's contract that, I mean, I I did think it was Joel making these, but perhaps it wasn't. Maybe it was someone at Fangamer and Joel was like doing some other facilitating somewhere else, replying to messages maybe on Kickstarter, but not actually doing the updates I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Unless you know, Matt. I don't have a clue. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Not the most epic update to end on, guys, but that is the, the final update there. So, hopefully you've enjoyed that journey going through all 134 Shemu 3 Kickstarter updates. Some good, some bad, some more interesting than others. Um, hopefully I haven't fallen asleep with the last few here. They've not the most entertaining updates to to end on. But, Matt, we're going to have a little short chat now about the Kickstarter as a whole. I've got a few questions for you to sort of see what you think, opinion-wise, how, how you yeah, think it was run and, and whatnot. So, first up, just overall thoughts about the Kickstarter as a whole. So that's including all 134 updates. You're talking now, what, like a six-year sort of... Well, 2015 to 2020, maybe five years actually, sorry. Um, you know, planning the amount of stuff that went into this Kickstarter. Um, just overall, how do you feel that it went? Um, I'm going to sort of put the put that together with how I think Awesome Japan handled it as well, because I think they go hand in hand. I think overall, it started off a little bit bumpy. With uh, Obviously, the initial announcement was great, but it was a bit bumpy with the Sony stuff. And then it sort of came into a nice pattern of updates coming fairly frequently, which were useful and good. Um, but where at the critical moments where the PR was needed, damage limitation was needed, communication was needed, it fell down. It really did fall down. So to, overall, I'd give it a, a, probably a six and a half, seven in terms of how it was run and how it went. I think it could have been better and there's certainly lessons to have been learnt. 
I think Awesome in Japan had a very big job to do, given the franchise, given the fan base. And in terms of the updates and the content of most of the update, bearing in mind 134 of them is a lot of them, I do think the content of the updates generally was quite good. But within that, there's some real key moments they struggled. The Sony stuff, the Epic Games stuff, which I know wasn't all their fault, in fairness, and I don't know what happened to Awesome Japan post Kickstarter being funded, because I know obviously Joel now, who was working for Awesome Japan at the time, now works at WiseNet, and I think probably took that over. Mm-hmm. But I, they had a big job on their hands. They really, really did. So that I, I want to give a degree of sympathy to that side of things as well. Also got very confusing at times, didn't it? Obviously, there's, there's so many different tiers, so many different rewards. You know, the most funded Kickstarter and, you know, a lot of, a lot of backers. And, and, and then you've got the PayPal side of things as well. So you're talking, what was it like? Getting on for like 75,000 backers, all yeah. with their own unique preferences unique rewards such a nightmare to manage mate so <laughs> i think they did do an okay job uh, in terms yeah. of yeah i mean awesome japan i know one of the, the, the earlier updates they actually went in detail about like what this company is they've done a couple of kickstarter projects before but like very low scale like mm. you know i think there was a one about a cat or something that might have got like two grand do you know just very small I feel like wanted one of Yu Suzuki's friends or like another game developer that recommended them. I think they helped to do one of their games, perhaps. I can't, I can't quite remember what the, the the old business sort of thing was with with Awesome Japan. I can't Japan. remember. But to basically dive headfirst into the most successful Kickstarter project at the time, <laughs> I mean, it is a tall task. It is, and I, I do want to balance that with 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 the, the task it had at hand. But I do wonder, not to sound horrid here, whether a company who is more experienced with larger Kickstarter projects might have managed things a bit differently, certainly from the offset, I don't know. But it probably helped the fact they were, as the name goes, based in Japan to work with Yu Suzuki directly and have that contact with him because obviously they needed that contact with, with WiseNet regularly, whereas if you're working in America, you're not going to get that because of the time difference. So mm. I, I, there's obviously that side of it as well. As I said, a, a solid six and a half, seven out of ten. There's a, a lot of lessons to be learned here, I think. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair assessment, Matt. So, thinking about the future now, obviously we know we're trying to get a partner for WiseNet to, you know, potentially secure a Shemu Four. I don't know how many years down the line it would take before people start thinking, could a, a Kickstarter get us a Shemu Four again? Have we like really used up all of the the options out there? No partner wants to come on board. I suppose that that's a bad sign if no partner wants to come on board in the first place. But just f- say, for example, in the future, Kickstarter gets mentioned again. Do you actually think it could be an option again in the future? Do you think WiseNet as a company have learned from the s- mistakes of the, the, pr- the previous Kickstarter, obviously the one for Shemu 3 here? There's no more wars in Japan. But I mean, like you say, Joel is working for WiseNet, so could Joel run... A potential Shemu Four oh. Kickstarter. I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I've I've said to you in the past. I think enough time has passed now that potentially people may be on board again for a Kickstarter. I know there's always yeah. going to be your negative Nancys out there that remember the the previous Kickstarter and hated that one, and the media went hard on it as well. Probably the media will mm. probably turn and do the same again for a new one. But in terms of like it being a viable option, what what do you think? I think it could be, but we've got to remember the Kickstarter craze has, has, has died off, I think, over the years as well. So I don't think it's as popular for a funding stream. I think based on a lot of issues like Shenmue 3 have with communication and other Kickstarters not working out. Bearing in mind that Shenmue 3 did get released, people did get their stuff on the whole, yeah. um, whereas a lot of, a lot of, projects don't and in the case of star citizen still haven't so we'll we'll park that there i don't think it raises much money um i don't because i think the kickstarter was a lightning bottle moment at the time with the release and the build up to e3 the e3 moment yeah yeah I, I don't think that will be there i do think there will be some that are stung by kickstarter and won't want to touch it i think the media are going to be an issue i know that cedric wasn't keen on it doing it again 
for all those reasons and above. That said, I do think it could raise anything sort of between two and four million dollars, which would be great. But the problem with that is if you get people back in on Kickstarter, you're not making physical sales at release. And that could be a problem, in, which we'll touch on in a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's too much for one person to run. I think you need a couple, two, three people at least running something like this and talking to each other daily. Because yeah. if you don't, the, the communication stag is stalled. And they need to learn from the communication from the, the, the original Kickstarter. They need to be upfront and transparent from the beginning. Where's the money coming from? Who's back in this project? Where's the money going? Answer, you know, answer like all those questions ahead of time and keep people in the loop and updated if they were to go down that road again. I don't yeah. think, I think they can, but I don't think they will. And I think thinking of that sort of angle, if they do, if they are really upfront and like, you know, own the mistakes in the past and, you know, be honest about that at the start, maybe they could even win people back over. Like, if they come out and say, look, maybe, yeah. You know, Shemu 3, we, we didn't do the best job. We know there's a lot of decisions that maybe hampered the success of the game and things could have gone a bit differently now we've potentially learned from these mistakes and we're going to try and do a Shemi 4 kickstarter you know with that in mind and be, be more focused and improve basically and I, I don't know maybe they could win people over but again it's just i don't know it's it's, it's all just out there and it's um what's the word um hypo hypothetical it's yeah it's, it's very unlikely to be a thing because i think everyone's over Kickstarter as a Shemu game funding platform. Mm. I don't think it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> it's going to happen again. But it's it's just fun fun to sort of think about and um, discuss with you, Matt. That if it did happen, how it would go down. It might go down a little bit better than a few years back because it's been so long and sort of time heals things, doesn't it? But I don't know. We'll we'll move on from that one. So yeah, in light of Shemu 3's Kickstarter. Do you think that basically how things went, a lot of toxic sort of atmosphere that surrounded a lot of the updates, do you think that negatively impact the performance of the game at release? So to the general consumer public, do you think consumer public were aware of these things that had happened or...? I think some were, and bearing in mind how hard the media went in on some of it, rightly or wrongly, um, I think people were aware of it and it would have had some impact on the release of Shenmue 3. I don't know how many people didn't buy or play it because it was on Epic rather than Steam, but I d Shenmue's more of a console title anyway, so it's not, I, yeah. I don't think it would have been that many. I think overall you've got to look at the fact there was, what, 60,000, 70,000 backers, most of which got a copy. That 60 or 70,000 sales that if you had traditional funding you haven't got because... Mm -hmm. Obviously, they've backed it through the Kickstarter, the games, the reward. So there's that issue to it in terms of sales performance. Um, I do think the media and the reaction to the Epic Games thing, some of the communication would have had some impact on, on retail performance. But I don't think it would have had a drastic impact on it because I think most people would have just moved away from it and bought the game anyway. Or there, was, there wasn't going to be a big enough contingent that it would have hampered a game like Shenmue in such a degree that it would have been the difference between another sequel getting greenlit almost immediately. I don't think there was that volume of people behind it. It was a Kickstarter for a niche game that went viral, that had a lot of backers, a lot of hype behind it. Um, so I don't think the, the media stuff and the Kickstarter and the communication around it would have hit it that hard. It would have hit it, but I don't think it's a determining factor. I think the determining factor is the fact Shemu is niche. Um, it will always, unless something changes, be niche. And I'm happy. Yeah, and as long as they can make money from that and give us future installments based on the market they have, that's fine. But the big, big chunk of it is the fact there were 60, 70,000 backers who wouldn't have, you know, potentially couldn't have bought a game on release. I don't know how many people double dipped on top of the Kickstarter. I fucking 20, 30 times dipped. So. <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah. Um, so looking back then, in, in hindsight, do you think the Kickstarter was the right decision? So obviously, again, another sort of hypothetical at the time, Yu Suzuki, Ryan Payton, the people involved in Shemo 3 at this point, Cedric Pesquet, Kickstarter was probably the only viable option in their minds. But looking back on it now, if, say, Shemo 3 had just been announced on Sony's stage as a game coming from 
Sega, a game coming from Sony, like a fully funded, like sort of what we want now, a partner to help them to make a Shemu 4. It, you know, it doesn't need a Kickstarter. It's a company helping a company, just completely giving them all the money that they need to make a game. Consider it was the top of the list, Sony wise. Was there actually other options on the table, perhaps? But they were sort of leaning into this Kickstarter thing. Um, again, you, like you said, Kickstarter was buzzing at the time, quite a, a good platform for getting projects off the ground, and maybe they felt like Shenmue. This was the only chance to do that, but I guess what I'm saying is, do you think if they'd investigated in other avenues, could there have been other options? And then ultimately, do you think that Kickstarter was still the right decision? <laughs> I know that's a bit of a loaded question. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of other options, I think most have been explored, and I wonder quite if they were going to get private investment outside of Kickstarter, take away the possibility of a Kickstarter for a minute, whether that was going to be enough for Yu Suzuki to do what he wanted with, with a Shenmue 3. Now, it turned out that he probably could have done with a bit more money to do what he wanted with Shenmue 3 in terms of story content, but I'm not going to go down that road now. So the Kickstarter, I think, over the years, obviously once Ryan Payton mentioned it to Yu Suzuki and all the conversations started happening around it, became the only viable option to get a large sum of money quickly which would also serve as a proof of concept, a proof of market potentially for Shenmue. Hence why Deep Silver came on board, because I think they saw that and thought, you know what, we can make some money here, rightly or wrongly, without really understanding the ins and outs of the franchise and and the market around it. Um, I do think it was the right decision. I do, because I don't think had a Kickstarter never happened, I think Shenmue 3 may have happened. It may have happened eventually. But I don't know to what level. Sega were never going to touch it. I still think to this day they have a problem with Shenmue which goes beyond any sort of understanding that I have. I think that comes from Japan. And there's people there, for whatever reason, have a real issue with Shenmue and and what happened with Shenmue. Um, There's many issues at Sega that caused the downfall that they had, not just Shenmue. But I do think part of Japanese business culture is they do hang on to failures quite hard. Hmm. and I think Shenmue is considered a failure in that regard and I can get it from a business point of view but there's other franchises that have failed over the years that have somehow got releases coming back I also think the Kickstarter shocked everybody in terms of how successful it was off the initial funding and I think there was a, a, a revival in the Shenmue franchise in terms of the anime in terms of merchandise that we're still getting to this day don't forget mm-hmm. that wouldn't have happened without it and that's the key thing here. People can sit down and go, Shenmue 3 killed the franchise. And it may, it, right, uh, devil's advocate, it may have done. It yeah. may have not done enough. And we're going to be sat in this quandary forever. Yu Suzuki may not get the funding he wants, but partners aren't going to give him it, but they're willing to go to a certain point. And I keep saying there needs to be a middle ground found in that, and I, and I stand by it. But what, what it has done is revive Shenmue. And it's still alive now. The anime wouldn't have happened without the kickstarter we know that jason demarcus said that quite openly they got greenlit just as shenmue 3 got released um the re-releases wouldn't have happened without the kickstarter okay the motives were money making and cheap money making from sega but it was a money making thing and we got shenmue released on modern platforms so it opened shenmue to a whole new world of gamers and there are new people picking up shenmue slowly but surely so again that's a positive the merchandise we got a load of merchandise over sort of 2018 all the way to the present day and we're still getting it so i do think it was the right option i think it was the only option and i do think there was no other option or better options available at the time and i think overall it has revived the franchise mm-hmm. could it have revived it better yes for many reasons many many reasons but without it i think we the franchise is dead and I think that's where I'd, I'd, I'd leave that point. If that Kickstarter doesn't happen, Shenmue is done. And I don't think he gets funding. And I don't think that, like I say, he may have done, but I don't know if it'd be on the level that he got with the Kickstarter and the 20 million budget that was quoted. I, I just think without Kickstarter happening, I don't think we get any of what I've just said in terms of the, the anime merch and everything else. And I think Shenmue probably remains a dormant slash dead franchise and we probably all moved on with our lives and mm. and have um, gone to play Yakuza like a dragon. 
well, I think that is quite a, a poignant point to uh, sort of put a line in the sand under, the, under this uh, whole epic Kickstarter updates chapter. I think you are right there, Matt. I think, I mean, the Shemu series is kind of already dead at that point, wasn't it? So it was the Kickstarter that came out of nowhere, really. No one was ever expecting a Shemu 3 at that point. It had been so long. And then for, for what happened on that stage, you know, gives you goosebumps even now. So I, I think most of what you said there is 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 correct i think i think they could have capitalized a little bit more if i'm being honest on especially like the anime when that came out they should definitely have gone mm. full hog on that and tried to because it was a success that was actually yeah, one of the few really well. Shenmue successes in recent years and that, i know it was like typical warner discovery sort of merger thing tax write-offs etc but i think it could have done more i think c could have done more Sega didn't even really market it, to be honest. I didn't see Sega nah. put a tweet out about the anime or nothing. They should really have capitalised that. Across the world, T-shirts, merchandise, Blu-rays, we've talked about it to death, but that could have been the Shemu revival that would have helped us in this position where we are now with getting a Shemu 4, a Season 2, etc. I think that, them not capitalising in that moment, potentially has been more harmful than this Kickstarter ever was. Because the Kickstarter yeah. ultimately got us more Shenmue. Like you say, it revived the series. It got us 1 and 2 on modern systems. Uh, mod, well, you know what I mean. And it got us the anime and all of the merchandise since. Because a bit lackluster in merchandise prior to the Kickstarter. And then, obviously, these companies try to use the buzz of what's going on to um, sell products to you. And it worked. I bought them all. Uh, I think the merchandise generally does tend to sell out. Which again, why not capitalize on that? Give us some fresh designs, more merchandise, insert queen clothing, give us like a Tom t shirt, you know, just go a little bit outside the comfort zone with the, the Hazigi jackets. We've kind of had them to death now. Maybe look at other things. And I think, again, whether that stems from people in these companies not being as knowledgeable about the Shemu series, so they just go for like whatever sort of looks like it's going to work, like the Hazigi jacket, mm. the dragon mirror design motif thing the logo these sort of like basic things and perhaps someone's not knowledgeable enough to say like you know let's do full-size replica mirrors let's do tom's t-shirt let's do branded this and branded that and go very niche and i suppose they haven't really got the market research to back it up either in terms of sales but i still think everyone that's buying the haziki jacket is still as likely to buy a replica mirror and numbers or a t-shirt with a different design that doesn't happen to have the Hazuki Tiger. I think there is different avenues out there to really capitalise on Shenmue and the fan base because that's ultimately mm. what's going to make the money. And I just feel like whoever was involved, Sega especially, didn't do enough, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm sort of talking myself into a cul-de-sac here, Matt, but... Yeah, I know where you're going with it. Mm. I think with everything that like the anime you're right the adult swim market the hell out of it sega didn't really do anything they didn't capitalize on any of the merchandise anything of the sort i just think there's too many missed there's a there's so many a host of missed opportunities with shenmue because i think at the end of the day the the parent company the ip holder don't believe in it is my view so sega will go well i'll do because they don't believe in it yeah. whereas like a dragon which has had the opportunity to prove itself bearing in mind he struggled for a long long time has had that opportunity for whatever reason and they believe in that and they will give it every opportunity to be successful Shenmue never got that and that's what hurts because they a lot of the the parent company are just aren't interested they go ah, would you know whatever whatever does enough just enough and then we move away from it again and that's what I think what it what Shenmue needs is a, is a company who understand it who want to invest in it and want to make the best possible Shenmue franchise that they can, um, knowing what the market is, of course. And that's where the, 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 the pinch point is. At what point is there money to be made, but meets the vision of Shenmue, not just as a game, but as a franchise. And that, I think, is still being found out to this day. Spot on, Matt. Right, let's have a little break now, a little breather, before we get into Terry's quiz. So just a heads up, everyone. I don't know what's in this quiz that Terry's designed. Matt doesn't know what's in this quiz, but it's basically going to be testing us on all of the <laughs> the, the sort of the cum culminated um, Kickstarter updates that we've gone through, all oh, 134, 
going to test us and uh, yeah, stick around because uh, it's going to be interesting anyway. So Matt, your your next music pick, your last music pick. It is called An Unknown Past and I can't think where the hell it plays, but it's a nice piece of music all the same. <laughs> it plays in Shemu 3. It does, that's all I know. Welcome back. That was Shimmy 3's An Unknown Past. Right, Matt, are you ready for this Terry quiz? <laughs> I hope it's not as evil as the last one. I will the say that now. The last one was, what was that, at the end of the Yu Suzuki sort of GDC and yeah, the Shimmy the, the Master, Master stuff. interview stuff? Yeah, and That was hard. That was really hard. That was hard. a bit of a hard quiz. Apparently he's got Switch to check this over for us, so I don't. I haven't actually looked at this quiz, just to point it out there. So me and Matt are going to work through this together, going blind. So yeah, I guess we'll just crack into it now and just see what it's all about. So obviously it's it's going to be testing us on the Shemu 3 Kickstarter and all the updates that we've gone through. So yeah, hopefully you listeners out there are able to um, have a go yourself and see if you've been following along with us and... <laughs> We've um, graduated, I guess, in terms of uh, the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter. I hope so. I hope yeah. so, because it's... Yeah, we've covered these at length, haven't we? And hopefully we remember something hopefully, from what well, we it's about. T- Total number of questions in the quiz is 20, so hopefully we can get 20 out of 20. So let's see how we get on. So right. question number one, Matt. Who is recognised as the key person who proposed the Kickstarter option to Yu Suzuki? Is it Ryan Payton, Cedric Biscay, George Kitchen or James Brown? <laughs> and I, and I, I know he's, he's, he's eased us in there. Yeah, and it's got to be Ryan Payton, isn't it? Yeah. So there we go. Proposed the Kickstarter option to you, Suzuki. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Confident on that. When was the Kickstarter begun? Question Ooh. two, is it the 14th of June, the 15th of June, the 16th of June, or the 17th of June 2015? Oh, that's hard. That is quite that's... tough, actually, because I didn't really... For some reason, I've got the 15th. 15th looks right I to had, me, but... I had the 15th in my head, because I think you? a lot of the articles broke overnight, which came into yeah. the 16th hour time. I can kind of picture the headlines, actually, now you say that, like, the date is... The... Let's go with the 15th, if you're happy with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Question number three. How long did the Kickstarter campaign last? Interesting, because I would have thought... All Kickstarter campaigns are 30 days, but the options are 32, 60, 90, or 180. It certainly wasn't on the high end, was it? The no. 90, 180. I don't even think it was 60 days, was it? It was July. It was It, it, it was, was just it, one month. It, yeah, it was 32 days. I mean, I don't know how it was 32, unless it's just because it was like 31 days and... 
an hour or a minute took it into the 32nd yeah, day, pos day sorry. Possibly. I don't possibly. know. I think it's 30, 32. We'll go with 32. Um, question four. How long did it take to reach the initial target of $2 million for the Kickstarter campaign? Was it eight hours, 24 hours, two days, or one week? It was eight hours, wasn't eight it? Hours, it, was done wasn't in it? Less than it was done in less than 24 hours. I remember that being yeah. quite a big deal at the time. Kickstarter record. Uh, Guinness World Record, I mean. Yeah, Guinness World Record. Kickstarter World Record for the fastest funded video game. Um, there's some other ones as well that I can't remember now, but it broke a lot of records at the time. Yep. Question five. How much did the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter, including the Slackerbacker campaign, raise? Oh. Was it 5.9, 11 million? Hang on, let me... How, how would you how would you verbally say these? So, 5 so million, say, 900... Say, and, um, you, you do these, Matt. I'd say it's just 5.911 million, which is 5,911,000. Yeah, okay. Let's do that then. So, 5.911 million, 6.314 million, 6.333 million, or 7.179 million. And obviously, including the slacker backer, it's got to be over seven million, hasn't it? Yeah, I thought it ticked well over, yeah. well over the seven million mark. Because they raised like another seven hundred thousand or something, didn't they? I think. Yeah, it was quite a lot of money. So yeah, we'll go with that one. Question six: How many backers in total, including the slacker backer campaign, contributed? That's quite evil, Ooh. isn't it? There. That's on the higher end. I I'm sure it's 81 as well, you know. So uh, let right. me just go for the figures. So we've got 68,155, 69,320, yep. mm -hmm. 69,520, or 81,087. I thought it was 81,000. I always thought in my head it was in the high 70s. So going yeah. 81 would be about right. I would say so because I'm sure the 69,000 just on the Kickstarter. Yeah. So the slacker yeah. backer must have took that up to 81. Especially if they raised that. another 700,000, like, I think. Let's go with that. Okay. Question seven. If a backer decided to pledge 10,000, a significant award was given. Which one is not one of the awards? So I'm guessing Ooh. these are the the rewards so we've got the original jacket worn by Masia Matsukaze for all of the Shenmue press events 14 years ago dinner with Yu Suzuki and Shenmue script set be a Shenmue 3 NPC and feature as a Chiyu Men member to do battle with Ryo or appear as an NPC staying at the Hotel Niawu so the Chiyu Men was 10k the dinner was yeah. 10k the yeah. jacket was 10k so it's got yeah. to be the NPC which I think is the one that George Kitchen took and I believe he only paid like six and a half for that, which is pretty good to be honest, considering how much Joe Joe Kitchen does. Say George, I meant Joe Kitchen. He's yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe's like knocking about the whole half of the well, and, and and flexing in his hotel room. Yeah, definitely. So I think it's yeah, that we'll one. Go that, yeah. that. We'll go with that. Okay. Does say question seven? Is this eight now? Not actually numbered, unfortunately. So. I think we're on question eight, but of the 28 stretch goals originally planned, how many of them were reached at the end? Ooh. Is it 13, 14, 16, or 28? So it's not going to be 28. No, no, because that was, I, I suspect 28 was the the final amount that they announced. Perhaps. Yeah, well, it's according to the question of the 28 stretch goals. So... They didn't meet all the stretch goals, so... No. I mean, look at it, these numbers. I still want to go for, like, the highest number. <laughs> but I don't know, actually, because they did a lot of, like, subtitle options. Uh, the Digest movies was, like, one of them. It's definitely not 28. I'd go... I'd go... I'm just thinking in my head. Just thinking what in the head. Like you said, let's go, th let's go through them in our head and see what we get. So... They so did. you've got the digest the, stuff. Yeah. You've got like you got Italian the, subtitles, Spanish subtitles, yeah, yeah. Portuguese subtitles. There was quite a yeah. few. I'd probably say there was German. Like, yeah, there's got to be like seven, seven or eight of them. I would have thought. Um, 
or six, maybe maybe six, and then you've got the high attacking one, whatever that was, the high ground thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got um, like the Shem Four Conversations thing. What was that called? Character perspective system. Possibly that might have been one of them. I think there was another attacking one, but I can't quite think what it was. Was it like Ragdoll something maybe? I don't think they got to it. I think they got they to that slackerbacker campaign. Hmm. I mean, it, he could be including the slackerbacker because he says reached at the okay. end. <sighs> I mean, it could be any of the 13, 14, 16, but I'd probably it'd be a toss up for me between 14 and 16. Especially if there's 28, because you think when we looked at that picture, there was more covered than not. Yeah, a lot more. So, I, I'd, I'd go 16 because I'm, I'm convinced the battle, the the um, I'm pretty sure actually, <laughs> when you think about it, they did they got to hide the the ragdoll reaction and they got to the AI battling if my memory serves me correctly. Which was seven in, my, million. in my head, I didn't think there was too many that were not reached, if you know what I mean. There wasn't. There wasn't at all. But 16's like half. Well, mm. roughly. <laughs> Just over let's half. Six, I think let's 16. Go let's go 16. Just over half, yeah? Yeah. Um, question nine, are we? I don't know. I of the so. 28 stretch goals originally planned, how many of them were implemented at the end? Oh, my God. Well, it's got to be all 16, right? Because that but probably he... answers the previous question. Because if they, if they reached a scratch goal... Ah, but is he then talking about the ones that came afterwards with the deep oh, silver money? Oh, right. Which mm. I would then be... I don't I don't think it was 28. I'd be sat between 22 and 24. I would say 22 oh, no. because I, there was, I'm sure there was more than four... That are reeled off that we yeah. reached. And they, I, I know they hit a load of mini games, didn't they? And they hit the, yeah. the, the additional quest for Niao Wu. Let's go to yeah. I'm happy with 22. I don't, I don't know either way. But Could be 24, 22. but I mean, it's these only two difference. It's definitely not 16, and it wouldn't be 28 no. because no, I don't think they got that high. They didn't. There was definitely some that I said hadn't been implemented. Um, so let's go 22 because you got like magic maze and that sort of thing. There was yeah. there was definitely at least four, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this this 22. Okay, there we'll go six, 22. Um, question 10: How much did a backer need to pledge to get one of the Shemu character busts? Well, I know that that was two and a half. So, and, well, the the options there, sorry guys, were. <laughs> did I read the options for the last one? I don't know if I did or not. You, you, we did, we did. Okay. Um, the options were, were one and a half thousand, two thousand, two and a half thousand, or three thousand. So, yeah, it's the 2,500 tier, that one. Yes. Um, question 11, I believe. Yu Suzuki took to the stage along with a few people and a Shenmue fan to play Shenmue 3 at uh, Magic Kyoto 2019. What's the name of the Shemu fan? Was it Cedric Biscay, Ezra Krabbe, Switch, or Sasuki? <laughs> Remember this Suzuki. one? Yes, she's the, the girl that actually was playing, wasn't she? Well, it, Ezra was doing the. He was doing the. Um, oh, he sort was, of the he hosting was doing one. The introductions and hosting, wasn't he? At yeah. Cedric, it was his event, and Switch obviously went to that event. <laughs> yeah. So That's, there we uh, go. Nice options there. Question, whatever, well, I don't know, 11 or 12. How many English and Japanese trailers were to in total were shown at in the Kickstarter updates? So note, the same trailer in both English and Japanese counts as two trailers. Bloody hell, Terry, I didn't, wasn't really thinking Let's about go. counting the trailers. Yeah. Right, we have to go through these trailers then from start to finish. Yep. You have the opening so, trailer. Hang on, let me just say, so the options are 7, 8, oh, yes, 11 great. or 13. Right, let's go through what we can remember. You have the opening trailer with Rio, well, Roy and um, Shenhua. And yep. then you had... They, didn't they do an ex extended one to that? Is that the one that was said, don't record it or something? No, that like was later 2017. on. 2017. Much later on. Um, there was Lake of the Lantern. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. There was that one. There was... 
what was the one where it was like going through the house a little bit and you could see Inisan standing in the doorway? Was that the first one? Yeah, or was that, that another was one? one of the first ones. You had, I don't know if this counts as a trailer, but you had like a trailer for the final 24 hours. Um, you had then the... I want to say there was something in 2016 as well. I don't know what it was. Then you had was... 2017 Gamescom, where they announced the delay. There was the magic one that we saw. The magic one, 2018 Gamescom. There was the A Day in the Life of Shenmue or whatever, where it was like quite yeah. more of the environments. You had uh, Spirit of the Land. You had the English... What was the one that, um, that that dude took a video of and it was like... Wine was only uh, good for his fortune or whatever. Oh, yeah, that was the Walmart trailer, which ended up in there as well. I so you're up 13. to 10 already? I reckon it's 13. I've, I've counted 10, so Japanese must count as, as two trailers. So let's go 13, yeah? It's got to be 13. I mean, that sounds a lot of trailers for a game, doesn't it? Considering that we were yeah, like, that's... they should have shown more gameplay and <laughs> it's, average, you know, it's an average of just over two a year which isn't yeah. bad i guess when you think about it from that point of view yeah there was was a lot of trailers on 19th of november 2019 yu suzuki gave a special thank you message after the release of shemu 3 which update is this message in so this was one of the more recent updates we've just done so your options are 92 124 125 or 126 now that is quite mean going four five and six but we started this episode on 121 we did and the that first was... few were like oh hang on 21... because the 121 was the launch trailer yes and then you had you had physical updates and shipping rewards i think that was two i think it's one two four i would say one two four i don't know Let's go for it. Because there was a lot towards the end there. There was a lot of like updates on when they're going to ship stuff. Yeah. And I... you've got to think it's there, there was a point where we started going like um, after November, didn't we? Like January or whatever. Of the yeah. Following year twenty twenty. There was there was quite a few in twenty twenty because we we noted that the updates actually stopped in November the eighteenth, twenty twenty. Yeah. So, so they did do quite was, a few throughout the year, I'm and sure. And that was one, three, four. Like DLC. It? There was DLC There's updates. Three DLC one. Mm. So was, I, I'd go one, two, four if it were me. But I, I'd say one, two, four. If I'm wrong, it's my fault. If one, two, one was the launch trailer, yeah, I think I'm it's sh- going to be closer sh- to that than not. I'm sure we had, we had, we had the DLC stuff and how to present your codes, the physical shipping rewards, and I'm sure it was a message at one two four. We'll go with that. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, next question. There are three differences between the trial version and the full version of Shemu Three. Which one below is not one of the differences? So is it no save load feature? Some specifications differ, e.g., some details may not be the same as the games. No tutorial or story at game start or exploration of Bailu Village. So there are three differences between the trial. Can we take three? Uh, it says which one is oh, not. Which one below is not, okay. So the three differences between the trial and the full version, which one below is not it's one of those differences? It's got exploration of Bailu Village, because that's what we've got to do. There was no save load feature in it. The specs may have changed in terms of the game and, and some positioning. And there was no real t- tutorial. Well, there was a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of story. So, so was... hang on. So, what does it mean? Does it mean in Shenmue 3, the full game? Yeah, versus the back of trial version. So, you, I, I wouldn't have thought you could save in the trial. No, we couldn't. Okay, so that's one that is a difference. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I get you. Okay, so some specs differ. Um, I mean, sure yeah, was, maybe I'm a sure couple of was. things, possibly. No tutorial or story at Game Start. Well, the, there was a tutorial and story in the full game, and you could explore yeah. Bailu Village. I don't quite get the options. It must be some specifications differ, right? Because the others are. Mm. Oh, hang on. Which one below is not one of the differences? Well, you could explore 
Bailu Village Bailu. The demo. There is no save load feature. We know that. The specs, I would have thought there were some differences. And then no tutorial or story at GameStar. I mean, there is a story you're finding the bookie. So maybe it is specs. Yeah, let's go with specs. Okay. We'll do do that. Com- confuse me a little bit mm. with the question. I, like, I, I didn't know if we're talking about what was different in the trial or the full version or. Um, it, it, it must be specs. Yeah, it's got to be. Because they would have had another month. I'm sure. To, to change stuff, maybe? I don't know. Let's go specs. Okay. Next question. New Suzuki travelled frequently to promote Shemu 3 at different expos and game shows. He even appeared on various online platforms to answer questions from supporters. How many appearances did he make and announce in the Kickstarter update? Oh my god. <laughs> a physical appearance counts as one. So, is it 11, 12, 13 or 14? Okay, let's do the physical ones first. So he went to Magic 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. That's four. He did Gamescom 2018 and 2017. No, he didn't go to 18. He wasn't there. He he did a video. Oh, does that count? A video? Yeah, it must do. Yeah, so that's six. Online platforms, yeah. So that counts as a video for that and one. And 19, wasn't he there? And that's where that big glass was. Big glass Shamu 3 and Peter yes, that that's one. Yes, co- that's, that's correct. He also did E3 2019. He did Magic Kyoto 2019. He yep. did Reboot, Reboot Blue 2019. He yep. did Paris Games. Uh, Paris. Yeah, Chapax and Paris Games Expo. So that's 12. Yep. Um... He he did a thank you message. That's thirteen. Is that and does he, that count? Because these are expos and game shows. And announcing the Kickstarter. I, I, maybe I'm be. I'd go. For... I don't. I don't think like just a thank you message would count. I think it has to be like at a physical game show. So I think like what you were saying, like he didn't attend Gamescom, but that counts because he. And it does say okay. physical appearance counts at one. So I'm up to 12 at the moment. Yeah. I think. Right. Let's just go through it again, just so we've got it again. So Magic 2016, <laughs> 17, 18, 19, that's four. Yeah. So that we can we can class Magic as four, we know that. Kyoto Game Kyoto well, so that's five oh, Magics. Yeah, Kyoto's five, so there's five Magics there. The Game Comp he went in... Oh, he did, didn't he? He did with Ezra. Oh, bugger. Um... So, so let's do Gamescom anyway. So we've got five magic. Gamescom, you said 2017. 17, 18 was 18, like an online message. Video, video message. 19, he was there. So that takes us up to eight. Yeah. Uh, E3. Trapax. And Trapax. G Fusion Cores. That takes us to 10. That's 11. TGS is 12. Did he go Reboot, more than one TGS? Reboot Blue. I think he only did the one Reboot Blue and Paris Anime Expo. Yeah, I think it's 14. I think I it's would 14. say it's 14, yeah. Okay, we'll go with that. 14. Okay. God. It might be an yeah. evil one, and it was like we, we just counted 13, but. Yeah. And oh, maybe well. the, the video message for Gamescom 2018 doesn't count. I don't know, but we'll say 14. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yu Suzuki also made several online appearances to answer questions from Shemu fans around the world. Which of the following events is not one of them? So Yu Suzuki on Reddit, so he did do that. Yeah. Yu Suzuki on Twitch, he did yeah. do that, didn't he? Because that's where we yeah. had Joel Tess and stuff doing the mm-hmm, glove mm-hmm. in the can. Uh, hashtag <laughs> you ask you Tweetathon. Um, Tweetathon you... was there? Yes, like, yeah, there was. Means still, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Yu Suzuki was. live on Instagram. That doesn't sound familiar to me. He didn't do it. Yeah, Instagram's the answer there. Okay. Um, next question. According to the favourite characters poll in update 34, the most favourite character from the Shemu series is Ryo Hazuki. The second was Ren. Who was the third favourite? Was it Shenhua, Nozomi, Landy, or Joy? Oh, bloody mm. hell. If I had to guess, and I, I'm not I'm not sure at all, but I would probably say Nozomi. I'm happy because to go Nozomi. Didn't we sort of say like 
we were surprised. I think Shuming was like ten or something. Yeah, and he was. She was quite a way down, wasn't she? And it seemed to be like more fan favorite characters, which is probably why, you know, a lot of people who were back in probably know Shemi one more than two. Mm. So I feel like there was like some daft ones, like Tom was in the top ten, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm. I'm pretty sure Nozomi, Landy, I'm not sure. No, I'm not. And Joy, Joy maybe I like Joy, but I think they have more of a, a, an affinity with Nozomi. Yeah, because I, I feel like one of the the clauses was there'll be an extra scene, so I think people just voted for characters that they probably knew wouldn't yeah. be in the game. If you know what I mean, like and, and Rio was like a daft one that there was an extra scene with Rio, but <laughs> you know what I mean, like Nozomi. I think people were just trying to get Nozomi in the game somehow. <laughs> yeah, possibly. So we'll go in Nozomi. Go Nozomi then. <clears throat> Uh, next question. According to the favourite Shemu mini poll in update 34, the most favourite mini game is Lucky Hit. Which position was Duck Racing? Second, third, fourth, or fifth? That's tricky. Third. I just because I fear I think third. I don't know have any any rationale behind it. Hmm. What would be second then? Darts, what you've said. Or, Darts, yeah. Or maybe, maybe if forklift was lifted, I, I would have thought that would have won. Actually, I was saying that, thinking about it. Look at you. I mean, there's a lot of mini games. Maybe it wasn't that high because d- duck racing is not that well known, is it? It's not, but it's also quite memey, isn't it? Yeah. It depends if there was like a, a you know an option like we're doing now, or it was like something you physically typed in. If it was something you physically typed in, I don't think it would have been that high, but. If it was an option, I think more people would have probably picked it. Um, I'm trying to think what other mini games would have been listed. Would, would, would you would have had darts? Like, what would would it have been darts, space area or something? Or would they have tried to have not done? They Sega might have tried things? to avoid Sega stuff, but you might have had like roll it on top. QT um, title stuff. Like that. QT title, yeah, those sorts of things. And maybe it was lower. Shall we go third though? You did say third. Yeah, I mean, I've got a whim. It's a whim. I haven't got a clue, mate. It could be any of them. So we'll go third just because gut gut feeling. Yeah. Okay, next question. In update 77, an announcement was made that a new company would help with character production of Shenmue 3. What's the name of the company? Is it Lashkia Digital Rio Gagagoto Studio? That's a funny one, Terry. Sega. Shibuya Productions. Uh, obviously, it's Lashki, right? Yeah. I like that. What, what is the combined runtime <laughs> of the Shemu Dojo Kickstarter review episodes in total up to part four? <laughs> oh my god. I, is it 11 oh. hours, 48 minutes, 42 seconds? 11 hours, 59 minutes, 43 seconds? 12 hours, 34 minutes, 56 seconds, or 14 hours, 51 minutes, 11 seconds. I thought we were averaging about three hours an episode. Which would make it 12, right? So I don't think we've gone over 12, because we definitely haven't done over three hours. No. And I I do feel like 11.59 might be too high, because that would mean we would literally have had to have done three hours an episode and I'm sure one of them would have been like two and a half right or, or have they all been they've all been fairly lengthy especially some of the discussions we've gone down did I... we do like any that were over three hours like three hours five minutes or something we I'm sure we did I'm hmm. sure we've been averaging about three hours a pop I, I'm sure it's did I say well. to you once like bloody hell that's the longest episode we've done it's like three hours yeah, twenty or I'm something sure. I'm sure you did. Oh man. Let's go 12 hours 34. I just I, I don't know, man. I feel that's too high. Because that that would mean all four parts would have to be over 3 hours. It just wouldn't surprise me if it was because <laughs> we, we do rub it on. Don't it's really we? that bad. Go on then. That hint, is that a hint, Terry? <laughs> it could be. It could be. Let's go 12 hours 34 then just on the the chance or, or the thinking that one of the episodes was like three hours 20. Yeah. And then, ah, oh, I don't know, man. That 34 minutes seems too high because then the other three would have had to have been five minutes long each over three hours, like three hours five. 
it's yeah it's tricky I, I i just i have a feeling it's long come on then shall we do that one Let's do i it. personally Five think hours. it's 11 hours 59 but i i do get what you're saying and it'll surprise me actually if it, if it is 12 and a okay. half. <laughs> let's, right, let's, let's submit those. A, that's all the questions. All right, let's see. Let's view the score. Your response has been recorded. 15 out of 20. Yeah, okay, so not too bad. So we've got the first question correct. Ryan Payton was the key person that proposed yeah. the Kickstarter option. We actually got the Kickstarter. Eight wrong. Yeah, 16. I thought it was a month, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Well, clearly, we got that wrong. Yeah, clearly. I'm not How long did the Kickstart campaign that. work? Uh, so that was 32 days. We were out on that. Yeah. How long did it take to reach 2 million? That was eight hours, correct? Yeah. Uh, with the slacker backer, it raised 7.179 million. That's good. Yeah. We've yeah, got actual little update. Um, little update feedback there as well. Nice one, Terry. Just to double check. Uh, how many backers in total? We were right on that, 81,000. Uh, if a backer decided to pledge 10,000, yeah, appear as an NPC staying at Hotel Niawi wasn't the one. Of the 28 scratch goals, how many of them were reached? We did 16. Oh, so says, that's a great one. Yeah, 16 well, goals were reached, and the 16th one was Battle System Expanded AI Battling. I think that's the one I was trying to come up with. Yeah, 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 that was it. And we actually got the... How many of them were implemented? So 22. So we were sort of tossing between 22 and 24. We got that right. That's good. How much did Baka need to pledge to get Shemu character bus two and a half? That was right. What was the name of the Shemu fan at Magic Kyoto at Sasuke? At Sasuke can't bloody say Sasuke, these words. Yeah. Tonight. Suzuki. How many English and Japanese trailers in total are shown? So apparently there's 11. 11. So he's listed them here. So you've got Lake of the Lantern Bug, New Progress Video, New Trailer, Trailer for Magic 2019, Japanese Trailer, English Trailer, PlayStation Kiosk Movie Extra, Gamescom yeah. 2019, A Day in the Shenmue trailer, Spirit of the Land trailer, and Launch trailer. Fair enough. Is there any there that like we possibly thought thought of as well that he hasn't listed? Is, is Gamescom 18 and 17 in there? What about Magic 18 that we went to? And 7. There wasn't one in 17. What's that? But Magic, Magic 19's there. Magic 18, there, was, there wasn't a trailer at 18. I remember uh, crazy okay. time. Well, what was the one that it. was the one that was like off camera, not to be shown? That was seventeen, so that doesn't count. Right. Seventeen or eighteen? That was eighteen because that that yeah. was shown at Gamescom seventeen as an extended trailer to the press, and they said don't show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. We'll go with that. On the nineteenth of November, twenty nineteen, Yusuzuki gave a special thank you message, and that was an update one two four. Correct. Did well yeah. there actually. Uh, there are three differences between the trial version and the full version. Which one is not? So apparently exploration of Bailey Village. I mean, I guess I see, I see what he means now. So it was like kind of all of the sections oh, were blocked yeah. off in the trial. Like yeah, the, I can get that. Yeah, yeah I get cause that. Because it was like sort of limited to the square, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, okay, fair. How many appearances across the expos and game shows was 11, apparently not 14? So it says Yusuzuki made 11 appearances throughout the Kickstarter update period. So we got Chupax 2015, Magic 2016, Gamescom 2017, Magic 2018, G, G Fusion Tour 2018, yeah. Reboot Develop uh, 2019, E3 2019, Japan Expo in Paris 2019, Gamescom 2019, TGS 2019, and Magic Kyoto 2019. Did he not do Magic 17? I'm sure he did Magic 17. So he skipped a all... year of magic, maybe, or did magic skip a year? And and he and a nineteen's not in here. Magic Kyoto nineteen he's got, but which was the magic we went to? Was it eighteen or nineteen? Monaco nineteen we went to. Yeah. I might contest that one. <laughs> yeah. So if you were to add them up, then Matt, so we'd have so, at least another two. So that'd be thirteen. And then, obviously, we, we also counted the off-cam games content with the 2018. Yeah. Which, you, that one you can sort of argue over. <clears throat> but, yeah, there's a couple there that definitely aren't there, which I, I know for a fact he did. Mm. I want a recount. <laughs> uh, next question was, Yusuzuki also made several online appearances to answer questions from Shimmy fans around the world. Which one was not? Live on Instagram we got. 
Uh, Nozomi was the third favourite character. So, yeah. Ah. So the listings were actually number th- third was Nozomi, fourth, fourth was Shenfor, fifth was Landy, and seventh was Joy. Brilliant. Duck Races was third, Matt. You were right. Oh, oh, I don't know how so I it actually that went. So it was Lucky Hit, QT Title, Duck Races, Billiards, Flower, Bird, Wind, and Moon. Billiards? I'm surprised it was that high. Well, same with Flower, Bird, Wind, and Moon over some others. Uh, Lashka, that was the right one for the company that joined. Oh, actually, oh, the shortest wrong. map. Yeah. We're both wrong. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just okay. see. Fair I was enough. thinking. I was thinking less than that, just because I'm sure there was like yeah. a two and a half hour one or something, which would have drastically reduced the thingy. But yeah, so maybe maybe surprising Matt that we don't waffle on as much as you thought. Well, maybe we don't. <laughs> maybe we don't. Yeah, but there we Aww. go, Terry. We've scored Thank fifteen you, out of twenty, potentially sixteen, but we'll um, we won't dwell on it. But yeah, appreciate that, Terry. Thank you again for the mammoth quiz and that takes us to the end of today's episode matt so we've wrapped up the kickstarter updates uh we'll probably do something a little bit different next episode what do you think yeah let, i don't know what yet but we'll work something out won't we but i'm looking we'll forward to something, something out I, I want to do a little different shemu 2 music special i think next That'd be let's nice. do that then there you sort go sort of mid-season sort of interlude break. sort of show yeah. yeah a bit of a break yeah do that from all this non-stop talking and seriousness we can have a bit of fun for change any bits to add on matt your spiel or whatever do you want to do oh i can do my my usual usual spiel so obviously guys thank you for sticking with us to the end of the podcast james and i appreciate everybody who drops in not just the podcast or the videos we put out and engaging with the community that the pushes on social media Without all of that, the dojo doesn't exist and doesn't help get the momentum that Shenmue's had, certainly in recent times. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you to each and every one of the community members who's out there. Don't forget, you can give us a follow over on X slash Twitter. It will always be Twitter to me. That is Shenmue underscore dojo. Facebook, Shenmue dojo. Instagram, Shenmue dojo. There we go. Uh, Twitch, Shenmue dojo. YouTube, Shenmue Dojo, Shen, I can't even talk, Shenmue Dojo VOD, I got cocky, I got cocky there, um, yeah. we're also over on uh, Mastodon and Blue Sky as Shenmue Dojo as well, we're also on Threads which is the like the follow up from Instagram, that's Shenmue Dojo as well as well as on Instagram, pretty much we are all over the internet, we also have our website ShenmueDojo.com for all the latest Shenmue news, uh, the YouTube has videos pretty much weekly in streams as does twitch and we also have our forums shenmuedojo.com forward slash forums if you want to join in the discussion and so i just remembered it we also have a discord server uh the link will be in the description spot on matt so yeah give us a little follow on one of those places i'm sure you already do guys right we're going to take the show out with the last piece of music tonight is called Raijin. Pretty cool piece of music actually. I don't know where it plays in Shenmue 3 but obviously we've been playing Shenmue 3 music and it's an epic piece to end on. Thanks everyone for listening and uh, yeah, we'll see you again on the next show very very soon. Take care guys. Take care guys, have a good one.
Ah, oh, look at the time. 